morning, good evening. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> this is Human <laughs> Colony TV. We are very, very, very honoured today to be having our live broadcast coming from Marlborough, New, New Jersey. Jersey. Yay! Live at Sabrina's. So we're very excited. My, my name's Rowie. I'm here with my partner Kim today. And we are here with uh, our other host, um, Guru Dan. Say hi, Dan. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to be doing our best. To <laughs> yeah, guys. So we're going to be doing our best to facilitate, facilitate a day of controlled chaos. At <laughs> <laughs> hurting cats. <laughs> we are going to be challenging. Jim's going to be challenging Takura today. It's a very special day because Sabrina's having a very special meetup with with Monster Rat and the rest of the Human Colony crew have decided to gate crash. So, and also we have um, some very special guests online with us today. We have Wendy, uh, Valerie, um, special guest Roxanne, uh, we have Neil, uh, we have uh, a, a new gentleman uh, called Mark. Hi Mark. And also Mark. Chris is here for the first time. And also our beautiful Ellie as well from Eastern Europe. So it's a pleasure to have you all here today. We're going to be doing questions for Takura. I'm sure she's going to have something to say as well. But I want to next introduce Sabrina and they can introduce who's with Jim and everybody at her house. So blessings to you guys and a big welcome. Hello everybody. I am having a great, great great time and um, I think it would probably be easier if we all just do um, say our names. Roll call. <laughs> Roll call, yes. Roll call, yes, because there are many, many of us over here. So I'll, I'll start with Ash. Oh, no. First of all, are oh, we, no, Brian. Are we presenting? Yeah, can we, are we presenting? Are we presenting? Hello, my name is Brian. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Or is that the screen? Hello, my name is Brian. Ash? Hey guys, it's Ash. <laughs> you, you I'll move out of the way. And I will. <laughs> Go ahead. Michelle. Michelle, that was Michelle. Sarah. Sarah. Maria. 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 Adriana. Adriana. <laughs> Montserrat. Montserrat. Yes. Zach. Zach. Zach, more of you. And where's Makiko? Makiko. Here's Brooke. And here's Brooke. Hey. And, <laughs> and where's and Joe? Actually, Joe is also here. Yes. And um, and Al is also here. Yes. And but uh, Joe had to lay down for a minute. So. Yes. And Al doesn't like cameras. So okay. here was, we was, are. Was Joe and Makiko the ones who are up to six in the morning? Because they look like it. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I was. I was. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> And Brian, and everybody else. We sort of crashed at about three. I went to bed about three. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna we're gonna skip the uh, announcements. We're just gonna go straight into it to you guys because we know you're on a schedule, and yes. we want to make sure you honor that as well. So, whenever you're ready to get in the zone, um, we are ready to receive the awesome messages from the beautiful Takura, who I know is coming through today. Yes, to her, and uh, she's been talking to me all night, waking me up and telling me things. So, um, <laughs> so she does have a couple things to say, but I don't know what they really are yet. So I'll be back in a few minutes or an hour, or however long it's going to be. But I love you very much. This is an awesome group. I wish you were all here because you'd be all dancing your butt off and having a great time. Yeah. Yeah. So. All righty, I will be back in a little while.
I am Takur. Welcome, Takur. Thank you. It is good to be around so many people today. <laughs> I've been watching the festivities and finding that the joy here is very high. And it is a wonderful thing. This is the kind of community that you want to belong to. That of unconditional love and acceptance and diversity and talent. And it's a, it's a wonder. And I am very happy and privileged to know this part of the humanity that is doing the right thing and moving in the right direction. I'm almost speechless at times because their joy is greater than what we can feel in our dimension and therefore I'm a bit jealous of it. Aww. But I love it, you. <laughs> but yet I do feel the joy and wonder of it all and it is a very wonderful thing and I am happy to tell you that things are moving in a beautiful and wonderful way. The energies of the earth are coming forth and uh, bringing their best side to this group and to the group of human colony as well. There are many about out there of you that are also feeling the great energy and pool of Mother Nature and uh, Gaia and all the things that are happening in the universe and galaxy. Things are happening every day at this point. Solar flares and galactic energy and pulsars and <clears throat> things that you that even I am not aware of because there is so much energy and there are so many people around your planet that are giving of themselves to help you rise. So they've seen the fire has been lit and there is not a problem with that now. They were worried that the ascension would not catch fire in time. However, it has. So congratulations. Thank you. Yes. And now the fire you need to feed and bring more into it, but I do not see a problem with that because you are attracting. Your law of attraction is working every day, in every moment, and you are connected with the fire of God. It's beautiful. And thank you. And that is what I wanted to say. I just wanted to let you know how wonderful and joyous it is to see all of you. The ones out there that have been connected to this gathering as well have felt the great energy of it and the great joy that it provides. Is there questions today? I know that some have hybridization questions. Those are welcome also today, at least a few of them. Yeah, we got questions from um, from Slava Takur. <laughs> yes, I heard that was about, coming. Yes. Yeah, he's got a few questions about his mother. Let me just get them up mm -hmm. here. I want to make sure I get them correct for you. Um, give me one second. I know about his mother. Her child is going to be Lear and it will be born in May. Oh, that's perfect. She, he asks, how is she doing in the colonies? She's doing well. She's actually surprised how well she fits in. She did not think that because she was an older age or whatever, that she was going to fit in properly with the people that were there and the things to do that are there, but she fits in perfectly and she's very happy when she is there because it is who she is. You become the perfect self when you leave your body in astral form. You look your perfect self, you feel your perfect self. And though, therefore she works in perfectly with all those around her and she's made many friends. Oh, I'm sure he would be overjoyed to hear that. Um, he also asks about a message uh, for his daughter Anna. Are you aware of this? Of course. Anna is precious. The biggest blue eyes I've ever seen. They are wonderful. She is just perfect for him. He is. It's the perfect child for Slava. It is exactly what he imagined in his mind that his child would be and look like and Anna is that perfection. And she is bright and mathematical and computer oriented and video oriented just as he is. He is 
her teacher in many ways. She comes to him, but she can also in the future be his teacher on the new technologies. Can you relay a message to Anna to say that a human mother knows about her now? Yes. And is very excited and would love to meet with her one day. It has already been done. Perfect. Uh, the last question from Slava would be, um, is there any news or updates from the colonies? Uh, what is happening at this time? Well, as you know, there are many things happening on your planet in your political fronts, especially with finances with countries and different things of that nature. And there are some political struggles going on, especially with China and Russia and with uh, Greece and uh, some of the others mm -hmm. that are having some problems. And therefore, they have postponed us many times. But they pro promised that we would have a meeting with them by the end of this month. And so, therefore, nothing has really transpired since spring with the governments because they've been too preoccupied. However, I can understand that, but uh, we feel like we are a priority as well. We are bringing a, the, a great deal of their future to them in some ways, and so, therefore, we do need to meet with them. We want to help, and yet they do not really see us as a help, but... They do, but they don't, if you can understand that. But they, they're they suspicious of us. However, I believe that things are getting better between us. They've noticed that we've stayed out of their business for the last six months, and they are appreciative. Beautiful. Thank you, Sakura. I believe Dan has some questions or a cue to come for you. Excellent. Hello, Tucker. Just like to say hello real quick. Um, Mark, Thank you. are you prepared to ask your question? Would you like to ask it in person? Well, yes. sure. I'm frustrated how little our science knows. I remember one hangout where somebody mentioned that Cosmos had it like 97% right. I just want to know if the universe is destined to end in a big rip. That is not known for sure, but I, I can tell you this. It depends on the way that the galaxy is treated, just like anything else. Mm -hmm. Because if you treat your Earth badly, it will deteriorate more quickly. Is that not true? If you treat the universe badly by... There, there are certain things that you can do to harm the universe. If you fold space too much, it is harmful to space. It can cause a rift. A, a breach or a, or a spot where things can change in that that place because it is it is a fabric as you would as you call it and therefore yes it there could be an ending but after every ending there's a beginning and if you enter a different kind of uh, energy state then you live that energy state to its fullest and your intentions in every energy state is uh, free will even with the amoeba the molecule whatever it is you still do what you want to do you do sometimes you think that amoebas just go where they are told to go but they are random and so that is free will is it not Do you have another part to that question? I feel that you do. <laughs> yes. Um, so is there a way of, like, um, you know, I understand that the big rip idea was about entropy. Is there a way of bringing in additional order and energy spiritually to maintain the kind of world we want to maintain? Well, as you know, there's... Creating energy takes a, a large amount of energy. Creating matter cre takes a large amount of energy. And therefore, it would be, have to be contingent on people getting together to do that. People agreeing and having a single purple purpose to do such a thing. And at this time, that does not exist. But I believe that as the, the future moves forward, and some races and species disappear and others begin and become more integrated, 
something of that nature could happen. However, you realize that that takes a lot of commitment. That takes a lot of resources. And not many species are willing to give up that much resources. And some species don't even have that much resources to give up. Do you understand that? Yes, thank yes, you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Takur. I have a question, question from Sheer. Ah, oh, Sheer, how are you? Uh, first of all, to cure much love to you. From my understanding, I've been on the colony on the twelfth of this month. Is it yes. today or at nighttime, or was it has it passed already? Is no, it will be tonight. This is the twelfth, is it not? It is the twelfth for him, I believe. Yes. The twelfth okay. in the evening. Yes. So it will okay. actually be between the twelfth and the thirteenth. You will go tonight. Okay. All right. I'm sure he's listening. Second, he'd like to say that he's going to be in Stonehenge, London, on the 28th of the Blood Moon. Is it going uh -huh. to have an effect on him or more? Yes, it will have an effect on him. There is no question. It can't possibly not have an effect on him. Because of the energies that are there, they are, they are made to re-interact with the Blood Moon. So he has to feel the energies there. All the sites on the Earth that are made by aliens or have any alien input whatsoever deal with all the moon cycles and deal with all things of nature outside of the earth and off world things even all the planets have something to do with how the structures were made and the center of the galaxy and Orion and the Pleiades these are the Orion and Pleiades are where these particular aliens created these structures to point to because they were means of travel. They were means of communication. But much of the technology is gone now. And the crystals that once aligned the pyramids and other places are all gone now because they could not maintain it here in the same way that they wanted to. And besides, there was other callings in other places, so they must leave. They had to leave. But they left behind a culture that is very intelligent and helped structure what Earth is today. Okay. He'd also like to know if you have any uh, personal messages for him. Yes. When you see the blood moon, when you are there at the blood moon at Stonehenge, Make sure you go to the to the Stonehenge that looks most like Pi. Do you know what Pi looks like? Uh, sure, it's not in real time with me, but it's the um, kind of it's a stone square. that goes across two square. lines and hangs off on each end. This was intentionally done. Pi is important to that particular structure because it's eternal numbers. Okay, he says he's familiar with the pi sign, so that's that's perfect. Yeah. Um, also, at the same time that popped up as you were answering that question, Karen Newman jumped in and wants to know just a quick question about is there a, um, a best way to use the blood moon energy? Do you have a suggestion for the people who are going to be using best, that kind of energy? Absolutely. The best way to use the blood moon energy is to bring it into your intention to do the best possible thing that you can think of. Now, it could be the best possible thing that you may need help for your health. It may be the best possible thing that you need connection with some other information. Please intend that the blood moon's energy deal with these matters because there is a great power there. I'm sure Will can tell you about that. But anyway, it is what it is. You do want to speak, don't you? Go ahead. <laughs> speak. <clears throat> the blood moon is the final in the tetrad of the four eclipses in the four full moons that happen on... The tabernacles, 
that the Jewish holidays and it's the energies involved in the blood moon and the final of the tetrad is so immense and so important for us as humans to be able to tap into it to help our spirituality, to relinquish those things that hold us back in our spirituality so we can step forward and become the awesomeness that we decided to be when we came into this 3D reality, into this human form. Yes. Let me add to that, that this is the most powerful blood moon that the Earth has ever seen. And so, therefore, it is very, very important. Because of the things that he mentioned with the Tetrad, I wasn't even aware that you knew about that. However, <laughs> however, but the Earth history is unimportant at this time. What is important <laughs> is that it is a very, very powerful and can help you in many, many ways. Not just in one way, but intended to fulfill many things for the future, for the present, and even clear up many things in the past. That is how strong this, this blood moon is. It is encompassing. Is there other questions? Um, yes, uh, Ellie's up. Ellie's up for uh, whatever she'd like to ask a question or, or say something, send love. Uh, hello, Dekur. Hello. I, I want just to send my deepest love, my biggest happiness for everyone that are there together. It is such an amazing vibration and such a big love going around everyone. The telepathy is amazing and I just wish that could happen more often. Yes, this would be very, very beneficial. Let me tell you why. Not only because of the connections that are happening here. The body contact with the hugs and the expressions of affection between each of the members is so needed. That exchange of energy is so powerful and connecting and brings it into a state where it, it locks in forever. Do you understand what that means? It means that these people here are united in a way that is only for these people because they have hugged and touched and become intimate with each other in the sense that they have interlocked their thought processes and understanding of who they are with each other. And therefore that makes this a very powerful group. And there will be many other groups such as this to come. <laughs> Does that we, make sense? Yes, Tikar, we love you. Uh, if you have a personal message for me, okay? If not, I wish you all the best. <laughs> there is a personal message for you, and that is thank you, because you've been moving away from some things that have been bothering you. You've been actually helping in the in the uh, colonies with in, in Colony B or two, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it two, some people call it B. But you've been very helpful. And your connection in the colonies is strong. You have a good understanding of health, education, and how to take care of yourself. And you do it in a way that it, it is easier for people to hold on to because it's more acceptable to their taste buds. Thank you, Tikar. You are welcome. Next, we have Neil. Neil, are you available? Yes. Neil. Hello, Tikar. How are you? Very good. Are you part of the other council? The Council of Wanderers, yes. 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 I've been talking to your friends. Yes. It's been very enjoyable. Yeah. And how are you? I'm excellent. How are you? I am excellent as well. Perfect. Continue. Okay, first question. I just want to know what I've been doing on the colonies. You, oh, you've been, actually, you and a couple other people are doing something very differently. You've been going off colony 
you've been taken to the colony, but then been moved to the area where they test flight and do things of this nature. They do. Uh, you're you're being trained to be a a uh, flyer, as they call them. Okay. And you knew that already. Yes. But also in the colonies, you do the telepathy, and eventually you will go into the channeling class, but not quite yet. Right, okay. okay. Uh, what, what part do the council play in the colonies, like the Council of Wanderers? I'm not understanding what the question is. So there's a council just now, the Council of Wanderers? Ah, yes, yes. That will be... We cannot tell you the full extent of it yet because you're still beginning. So therefore, grow together and now share your stories and the energy that comes between the stories will form a platform for which you to, to find common interests. And then we will come to you and share with you what that means to us. Aye, okay. Um, one more question I have is this. So there is incarnations I have in the past or in the future where I'm very, I've, I've been a very negative entity. Now, if I channel that entity, that incarnation of mine, would that entity cause me any harm? That is a good question because all the entities of the past, present, and future are part of you right now because they are all part of your chakras. You understand that. You bring all your lifetimes with you from the past and some from the future as well to you when you are born. Now they are not all ignited until you are have awareness of who you are as a person. However, your negative past does not necessarily mean that it is negative to the future. Sometimes negativity just points out what it is to be appreciative about the positivity. And so therefore, do not worry about your getting in touch with anything from the past, because when you get in touch with the past, it is always just telling you about your future. Now, you can also let go of the past if that is the will of spirit. And if that is what your will is as well, because you do have free will in this area. Now, it can be a good thing to let go of the negativity, but then again, in your case, I would not do that quite yet. And let me tell you why. Because I think it points out the great positivity that is to come. You want to reflect on that and say, no, that isn't what you want, but you want the opposite, and you will learn more by occasionally looking at the negative until you are able to just let it go. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. And the final question is, is there anything you can tell me about the Record Keeper Crystals? There is much I could tell you about that, but you cannot know that at this time. Um, I can tell you that your future self is very involved with that. When you say my future self, do you mean the future self that's on the ship above Earth at this time? Yeah. Actually, yes. Right, okay. Okay, so to follow up on that, how, how much interaction is there between that ship and uh, Gurfiknia? Not much, because it's, it's not permitted to be much. And there is a reason for that. But there is a reason for you to come back to this area from the future. And, he, and this is something that you are working on now. Your present self is not aware of the mission of the future self, but is continuing to carry it out in a way that is semi-clandestine. Your, your present selves are aware of who you are, and your future selves are aware of who you are as well. But you cannot know their mission completely. Okay, that was beautiful. Thank you very much for that, Takara. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. Okay, Takara, we have uh, a two-part question from A. Chris, and she asks, um, can you talk a little bit about the events that are happening this September 
with the moons and everything. And then she also asked, how do solar flares affect our DNA? The first question is that the, the things that I can actually share with you about what's happening in this month is that the energy from the Tibetan energy of wisdom, understanding, and power is moving to Peru. The wise leaders will now rise up there and not as much in Tibet. Of course, there will be a lot of energy that still lingers there. However, between the 19th and the 27th of September, the energies from Tibet will awaken in Peru, and it will be 1 and 9 is 10, which is a beginning, and 2 and 7 is 9, which is an ending, and there is 9 days in between, which is also an ending, and then, fine, and then the very next day is the blood moon. Does that answer your question? Yes, and I believe. What is the next question? If the if the uh, solar uh, solar flares affect the DNA? Yes, they they do not affect the DNA in the way that you think. They do not tear it asunder or make it different, but they stimulate it. They stimulate some things in the DNA that haven't been awakened in humans ever, such as psychic ability and telekinesis and these things, but it's only a small vibrational thing in the brain that they do. And you will not find yourself moving tables and chairs around with your mind. You will find yourself perhaps thinking that, thinking about it more, thinking about the telekinesis more, thinking about your psychic abilities more, thinking about your telepathy more, thinking about those things of and spirit more, but you will not actually have a great movement in that area, but it is stimulating these areas, which is important at this time for the ascension, because the ascension is a stimulation of its own, and that will also help stimulate the, the beauty of the um, ascension in a way that is more powerful because it may only be a little bit with each person but you put that together with thousands and, and millions tens of thousands I should say of people and you have a great deal of energy awesome thank you so much to Kur. Um, our member Valerie is up next with her question good morning to Kur. so nice to good see morning. you good morning nice to see you as well but I, I see your question <laughs> <laughs> do you know um, when I will be able to visit the colonies? You can visit whenever you are comfortable to visit. And then can you tell me how I do that? Through astral projection. We come to you in your sleep and we ask your subconscious if you are willing to go with us and you will say yes or no. Some say no, some say yes. You will come with us and we will give you your introductions. We have several humans that do the introductions and talk to people and let them know what to expect in the colonies before they go into fourth dimension. And then you move into the fourth dimension and you will experience the differences between the third and the fourth dimension and the different beings that are there. Now, if some people become immediately frightened when they come into the fourth dimension and see these things, we send them to Colony 5 right away to be calmed down with entertainment or soft music or whatever it is that they need for that moment and send a few people in to speak to them one-on-one -on -one because one-on-one -on -one they're much less threatening. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, my other question is, can you tell me about my recent past life? Your recent past life? One right. moment. Someone has already told you about it? Mm, a little. Just very little. The, that is what they needed to tell you, just a little. Um, there, your previous past life does deal with this life quite a bit. You're aware of that, I'm sure. And you are dealing with something that is from that past life, and it needs to be taken care of. But I do not really want to go into detail right now. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, one You're more welcome. question. I yes. am trying very hard to open my heart. Yes. And um, doing the Kijong, is that yes. a good, good tool to use? If you intend it to be a good tool, it will be a good tool. There are so many ways to open the heart with great and loving intentions. And the one that is most comfortable for you is obviously the best way. Now, there is a best way for everyone to open their heart chakras and different things. Everyone has their own best way and their own best resonation. And that's what makes them the perfect self, the perfect you, is to find those perfect resonations and to go with them and rise up. Because you are perfect now, but of course, if you add a stone block to another stone block <laughs> and call it a one piece, is that not 100%? You are 100% now, but if there's something added to you, that will be the new 100%. Even more better. Even more. Uh, what? <laughs> Even more better. I think that his English needs work. But, <laughs> much better. But it is all right. We have unconditional English love. <laughs> Good one. That's nice. <laughs> I thank you so much for that. Um, one more question. Um, yes. I am speaking to a close friend, and yes. and that could take some time to open my heart, but um, yes. and maybe a little pain too. Yes, that might yeah, be the best way. The, the problem, the thing is with you is there's a petition around the heart because it's been broken. And after a heart has been broken, it does not trust straight away. It does not have that feeling of compatibility with anyone because it is possible to be broken into even smaller pieces and there's a risk to be taken there. However, in this case with this group of people, with this person that you're speaking to now, I would take a deep breath and leave it out very, very far, and then say exactly how you feel toward them. That will open the door to the things that you need to know from them. The truth will come forth. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Love to you, and love to all of you. If you love them very much, please tell them, even if it's a broken love. Tell yes, them I do. You. I definitely I do love, love each and every one of you. Thank you. Much Thank love. Thank you so much. And I see that you will heal and things will come back together for you. Thank you so much. That's what I wanted to hear. Yes. And we love you as well. And the very fact that you send out your love to others will come back a hundredfold to help you heal. Oh, thank you. And um, I had, I happened to have an experience outside the other day. I asked um, Gaia, could we exchange energies? And I felt like I could hear, of course, dear. Yes. Of course. Is, was that Did correct? You also hear giggling and laughter. <laughs> yes. Because Mother yes. Earth is very, very happy to give you what you want. Oh, thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. You did speak Good day, to everyone. <laughs> I would like to intercede right here. Um, Chris has been a member for a long time. He rarely joins, and he's always writing beautiful, positive things on the chat boxes yes. and saying how wonderful Jim and Max are and how Takur and Lakesh helped him so much through things that he's gone through. So... I would like to thank him for that, and if you have any questions, um, go right ahead. Of course, of course. Now I'm quiet, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just had a, <laughs> I just uh, had a couple Chris. of questions. Uh, uh, one about uh, uh, something I've always wondered about, and that's the the mineral supplement Ormus. Is there anything you can tell me about that? Uh, pros, cons. Ormus. Are you talking Ormus? Is that what you said? Yes. Ormus, Ormus does have. Also. 
Yes, it does have an effect on the DNA. What it does is makes the DNA much more communicative with the rest of the body. So therefore, it's it opens up, it, it like turns up the volume, it amplifies the connections. So therefore, if you are speaking to your D DNA, if you are needing your something in your body to help heal, if you need something in your system to be more aware, then you then this will help amplify that message to wherever it is that it needs to go. Is it too much to, is this something that, you know, we should, being that we don't get all the minerals in our natural diet, is this something that we should put in our diet daily, or is it like kind of based on how we feel? It is not or? for everyone. It's not for okay. everyone. It is not for everyone, and let me tell you why. Because some people are already open. Some people already speak to their DNA, and it's already doing what it needs to do. And so they do not need a stimulant for it, uh, or, or an amplifier for those kind of things. So be joyous that it works for those that it needs to work for. It is a wonderful thing. Okay. And at this time, there are many things that are working with the DNA. DNA is an incredible tool for each and every human once they learn how to use it. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, one other question. Uh, can you tell me anything about the ship that I seen above my apartment? <laughs> um, yes, it was there for you to see. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> it, it was a confirmation. It was another confirmation because you have the ability to summon them, and you actually did do that, and you were wondering if that was the case. Yes. And that was the yes, answer. Yes, I was. Yeah, that was the answer I got. So, woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> yes, they said, Is there a... Hello. <laughs> they said hello, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they are they are a subculture of you yell yes. Okay. Oh wow! Wow, it's interesting. You know, based on what it, what was going on at the time. Uh, I have books and books of questions and thoughts, which I won't go into now. But uh, is there anything that uh, uh, I, I want to talk to you later? Of course, we didn't we haven't gotten a chance yet. But is there anything you want to say to me right now? Yes, or that you You're improved, you've improved 32% since the last time I've talked to you. <laughs> yes! Uh, yeah, and I have yet to talk to you, to you and Jim about it, so <laughs> I feel it. Do you know that? Have you realized that you've improved? And also, oh, yes. your, mate, your mate is now astonished. Wow. wow. Yeah, well, she's, your mate she's starting was, to come around now, right? Yes. She's astonished by the information. She's astonished by the change and how it's occurring, not by not by earthly means necessarily. It's happening supernaturally, and she is aware of it. Did you get all that? Awesome. Yes, I got that, and I've, I've been I've been noticing it lately. But I, you know, I've been kind of trying to back off since I've been so overwhelming lately. And not only her, but my father, which has just blown my mind. But you know, I'm just gonna keep being quiet and doing my thing and let them, uh, you know, <laughs> see what's up. But I really appreciate that. That, that. that makes me smile. That's a very big confirmation for you. You are on your way out of, out of prison. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, and uh, I'll let somebody else talk, and uh, hope to talk with you, Jim, and everybody there soon. I wish I was there today, but maybe next time. Yes, I tried, I tried, I tried, I tried. So I give you a big hug, you and Jim, at once. <laughs> yes. Have a wonderful day. I am very proud of you. Thank you. Yes, me too. Thank you. Bye, everyone. To Kurt, next we Bye. have a question from a member called Momentum of Light. <clears throat> Excuse me. If extraterrestrial life has been in contact with our governments and world leaders, why are they allowing said government and leaders to commit crimes against humanity. Even Bashar talked about stopping a nuclear launch. 
So the question is, uh, I guess, an ethics question about uh, these governments. Because if you are aware that about how your governments are, you will understand that if we do any involvement, it would be a takeover, and that would be a different angle of which they would see us. We do not want in any way to have a takeover scenario with your governments. We allow your people to interact the way that you are that you see fit and your government see fit. We cannot stop that. That is your free will. We do not interfere with your free will as a species. We will help you with your seismic, volcanic, and things of Mother Earth because she is part of who we are as well. However, we will not interfere with the human species as far as how they want to run their planet. If they want to run it poorly, then we will let them do so. We will give them suggestions, and usually they do not take them. So, therefore, we are outside looking in, but we are trying to help as much as we can with the things that are a moral obligation as far as what we can do, but we are not going to take over your governments. We are not going to tell them what to do. We are not going to have a takeover. That would not be a beneficial thing for anyone involved. It would not be beneficial for you either because some of these things that are happening in the world today that you may see as cruel and terrible and awful will have a reason. You will see, you will look back at your human history and say, this is what was and this is what is. And it will be a a reminder of what not to be in the future. Wonderful. Thank you. I um, have uh, a question from uh, member uh, Barbara Joy. She says, much love and joy to you, Takur. You told her a few weeks ago, you told her that she has three hybrid children. And she wants to know, what else can you tell her about them, like their names, their ages, uh, their races, or their, their DNA uh, lineage kind of thing, and uh, right. and she thanks you so much for the information. I must uh, get in contact with some people with the information on the ship. They knew, they've moved this out of this computer to make room for other things, but it is all over the ship in some ways. But um, your children are Liren, Pleiadian and Syrian. Two girls and a boy. Two years, one year, and eight months. Their names are, oh, the uh, Pleiadian's name, it's, it's the boy, the Pleiadian is the boy. They would actually want you to name the children. But they, they've given them names, earth names. They've, they've come to start giving them earth names so that they get used to the kind of culture that earthlings are part of. So the boy's name is Jeremiah. And the girl's name is Felicity. And the other girl's name is Benda. Brenda. Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, and that is that is as much information as I can give right now because we're limited on time. Yes, thank you for that. I'd like to get um, to the next question. Uh, let me see who's on the list. Oh, Gabriel. Oh, Gabriel. Gabriel says he just wants to say hello to Kerr and give hey. you a big hug, and wants to know if he's been to the colony recently. And then he yes. comments, I have felt disconnected from the colony to Kern Lakesh. Can you ask about why? So he, he'd like to know why he feels disconnected at, at the moment. Well, he's living a very third... He's not liking his job. His job is actually de, de, uh, bringing him away from fourth dimension to a point where he's not feeling the interaction that he felt before. That is fine. It will pass. Do not worry, Gabriel. We are still with you. However, right now you do need to have a break from us 
so that you can be third dimensional and grounded. We need that for right now. And, and actually, we've seen many of your grounded sides at, at, in the webinars and things of that nature. So we are very happy that you are actually grounding and not being too fourth dimensional right now. There's a reason for this. But Lakesh, Kalish, Takur, you know, whatever the names you attach to us, we will be returning. Wonderful. Thank you for that. And the yes, you, oh, I forgot to say, he was at the colony a month ago. Oh, will he be going again soon? And, uh, do you know? Um, I think that we're going to wait. Uh, sorry, Gabe, you're real. We're going to wait until October to bring you. Okay. Well, that's not that's not very far off. No, not far um, off. Our next question is from uh, member uh, Johannes, or JD. Johannes. He says, uh, if somebody could ask um, for me this, this Philip, he wants to know if Philip, the name Philip, is who he thinks he is. He says he's channeled him, but he just wants to know if uh, if, you, if he can stay sure and if there are any messages for him and uh, Martina at this time. And thank you. He wants to know if he actually channeled Philip. Is that yeah, I believe that's I believe that's the question. And what's the other part of the question? Um. Just wants to know if it's sure and if there are any messages for he okay. or uh, Martina, his girlfriend. Once, one moment, please. Right. Let me connect to him. <laughs> yes, it was a light connection, though. It wasn't a strong, it wasn't a true channeling. It, it will get stronger. Do not be, do not be uh, upset. Uh, yes, it was a true channeling, and yes, it was it was slight and interrupted a little bit, but that's all right. It, these things happen, so I am I'm very happy that you are channeling. So do not worry about that. The other question is about his female partner. One moment, I have to connect. She does not believe the same way you do. However, she is very curious. Well, I, I'm seeing a, a, a few paradoxes there. I'm seeing sometimes she's curious and sometimes she's not curious. It seems like she goes back and forth, uh, that she's, she's not sure what to believe. So just continue to move forward in your work. Do not worry about her because she's figuring it out on her own. Do not try to explain it to her or anything of this nature. It is for her to discover. It is her wonderment that will be, when she discovers it for herself, it will be a greater wonderment for her. So do not try to explain it to her or bring her into it in a way that you think would be best for her because the best way for each person to discover of uh, this world, this understanding, is to experience it. And she will have that experience. Okay, wonderful. Have a question from uh, Christine. Um, yes. She says, blessings and greetings to Kerr. Can you tell her if her request for infusion of Lirin and Yael DNA has been considered further? Yakuwata, Shinji Robjin. They have both been approved, but we will speak to her later and see if when she wants them to start. If you want them to start now, the Lirin would be first. And actually, Yakuwata, Rotinsa. Sakodo. If you give permission, Liren will start on Wednesday of next week. No, no, this this week coming up. Yes. Okay. That is okay. all. Just, just have her tell us by email what what she wants to do. Okay. All right, and that's all I have at this minute. Uh, Jasmina is up next. Jasmina. Hello, Tucker. Hello, how are you? Good. Okay, yes. I have a question. 
Yes. What? Okay. Yes. I just I just moved. Uh, so, uh, what tips do you have for me to have a good life here? Where did you move to? Sweden. Ah, where were you living before? Slovenia. Yes. Yes. Actually, you have it under control. You are a personality that will draw people to you. You are a person that is not to worry about wh where you are so much as how you are. And you are fine. And so, Jasmina, do not worry how you're going to fit in or build your friendship ring or feel in this area because there is energy there for you. And there are friendships there for you as well. You are connected to many things. You have many connections around the world. And they are strong in some in some areas. So I am happy for you and it will be fine. Oh good. Thank you. Um and another question, does my moving like affects the trips to the colonies? No and it doesn't. When did I end? And the, only thing I that it, the only thing that it affected was your moving time. They would not take you um, to the colonies if you were doing something important or needed rest. So if you need rest, they won't take you. But at this point, it seems like you're well rested. So no, it would not interfere with anything like that. Okay, good. And when was I uh, the last time there? You were there. I'm very, I'm very 3D now. Yes, two what? weeks ago. You were there two okay. weeks ago. Okay. But when I was in Sweden? Or? Yes, you were in Sweden, yes. Okay. Did you see their, their uh, get-together? Hayan, Jasmina. Uh, did that happen? I wanted to go to that, but I did not see it happen. And oh, no! <laughs> yes, we did. wanted to. We all yeah. were together. I did not. Yes, I was Gabriel not and Paco. Yes. I was not able to attend, I am sorry. But it well, was we... it was a time when I they I was needed in the ship for some other things. We were bringing in a, quite a few replacements at that time in the Fen you realize that the Fendorians are new to our our Grukvik near and that we were bringing new Fendorians to replace others so they could have a rest and they were very willing to learn the new positions and so I was a training at that time and I'm sorry that I missed that. Um, um, can you see, can you see, uh, uh, um, can you see like see? what, did we have any changes because we had really good fun and uh, do we have any, did, did we give, gave any changes to the world or something? Yes. Oh, definitely. Because of your interaction, your touch, your bonding together, it created a greater light and a greater energy between you. Like I was saying about this group, it is now, they are forever friends, as they sometimes say on your planet. The children at least say that. But they are closely bonded now. They have become closer and understand each other in a greater way, in a personal way, and have exchanged energies. And it is what it is. It becomes a brighter light. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Karen? Hi. Hi, Tucker. Hi. Hello, Karen. How are you? I'm very good. I have a question for you. I had a dream, but I believe it was an experience. Um, I was, and I don't know where I was, maybe you can tell me, but I was in a place where there was a lot of people that I knew and three shrouded beings that were very long and black came through. And at the moment, everyone started saying, it's the men in black and it's the men in black which was not like the men in black that you hear described, but they looked more like discarnate spirits. And everyone yeah. started throwing things at them and attacking them. And they were it's actually 
biting people. They had silver around their mouths. And they attacked them and then they actually left. And it wasn't even scary. It was more like this happens and you just have to deal with it and go on. So my question was, was that a real experience or was it a dream? And where was it? Was a symbolic, it was a symbolic dream. It did not actually okay. happen. Okay. Um, I, let me explain what it, it was talking about. The, the men in black are feared by many cultures. They are not right. in only the human culture, but they are in many other different cultures and species because they work well there. And the reason why the people were upset and throwing things at them is because they were coming for them to send them off planet because they were not meant to be there. And they were breaking the rules. You were not, however, breaking the rules. You were observing what was happening. And when they bit them, it, the silver around their mouth was a, a symbol of the, um, the kind of job that they had to do. They do not speak, but they do uh, administer punishment. Mm -hmm. And so that's the silver around their mouth. And the, the long shrouds are things that come out of your imagination that people usually fear. However, um, these people feared them only because they were not in the right. They had to leave that planet. You did not throw anything. You were just a, a witness. Right, I was right. just witnessing it. Yes, and so you were understanding how it works on Earth as well. Is the men in black find those who do not belong here and send them away. They are feared because the men in black do have the power to release them into another area, send them away, as it were. And so they do, and to be on Earth is a privilege, but it must be granted. It cannot be taken advantage. Okay, yeah. I was, I was told in my dream that the silver was silver like a venom. It, it is the, it is the, it's carrying out of the, the act, yes. It's, okay. it's, there, it's not a venom as a spoken word, but it is a venom as an active punishment because they look at it as poisonous to leave this planet and go back to theirs. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you so much and much love to you. Much love to you as well. Wendy, are you ready for yours? And then we'll uh, switch switch gears here after Wendy. Hi, Takur. I send you my grace and gratitude and love. I appreciate the work you've been doing with us and I am sending you a hug and I do hope I've given you a hug on the colonies. You have. <laughs> very you good. You dance around, <laughs> you hug. Good. You are very animated on the colonies. You, the people find you to be very joyful. You can't stop moving. You have more energy than everyone put together. <laughs> I feel I feel somebody's talking to me in my ear right now. I think it's pretty funny. Um, I was wondering if maybe you could give me a little bit of more of information about how the hybrid parents are doing of my Yael son that's to be born in November. And I would like maybe if you could tell me. Um, I think I've been visiting them already, but I'm not. I feel that I have, but I'm not certain. And I wasn't sure about their names, perhaps. Yes, you have been visiting them three times already. Awesome. They are doing very well. They like you very much. They uh, give you tea with a little sedative in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> because you're very excitable. And, <laughs> and, and they, that way they can sit and calmly talk to you because you're very excited. But you do have much good advice on how to bring up the child in the proper culture that you're looking for. And so that is a wonderful thing. They like that much about you, but they just have to give you a teeny bit of a downer because it's just so that they can sit you down. So, and the names of the parents, the, the mother is Levasasta. Her name is Levasasta. And the male is Purka. Beautiful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
I was wondering also if you might be able to elaborate just to touch on the galactic languages and perhaps a little bit about how they specifically do affect our DNA. The languages are a download to the brain more than the DNA. They do not affect the DNA as much as they affect the effectivity of the brain. They actually open things up in the mind, bring more clarity, bring um, understanding, and they have subliminal messages about spirituality. So it does not really affect the DNA. The infusions affect the DNA. The downloads of language affect the brain, and only the brain. I see. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I wanted to be... I wanted to be more clear on that um, in my presentation of the languages. Well, I have to add something though. They do affect the chakras whenever that intent is given. So your, your galactic language can affect the chakras. It does not necessarily have to affect the chakras. But if you intend it to move through the chakras, it can brighten them up a bit. And, but it's all up to your intention. And some people have downloads that are not open yet, and therefore it doesn't affect anything until they are open. And is that the intention with the healing as well, to, in, in conjunction with the language? Is that what you're saying is with the intention? Yes, because the intention, the, you see, healing does not come from the DNA necessarily. The DNA is actually gives you the ability to heal, but it does not make you heal. You have to bring that in. You can grow that on your own. It's like, it's like a potted plant. You don't have to water it and keep it alive, but you would like to keep it alive and see it grow and prosper. But you do not necessarily, if you don't water it, it will wither and die, of course. So that is like your gifts. Any of your gifts that you do not use and fertilize and feed will wither and die. And therefore, when it comes to healing, you all people have the gift, and it is activated, but if you don't use it or bring it into fruition or feed it in some way, then it will not be active, and you will not, it, it's not useful. And so therefore, yes, the brain has a lot to do with that usefulness, because that's where it gets fed. You read, you look, you learn, you act on that. Your DNA is there if you want to contact it for extra information. However, it is the brain that is the catalyst to learning and feeding the, the skills. I see. Thank you very much for that, that clarification. And is there any other information that you might be able to extend about um, any messages for me specifically with respect to anything and with the hybrid children um, and the nursery and how everything's going? First of all, I want to say your husband will be joining you in your metaphysical activities not long from now. Thank you. He is already aware that he is interested. You yes. are aware also that he is interested. Yes. And that because he sits and watch certain things, but you know what is the major thing is that he loves you so much. He wants to be a part of your every being. And I this know. will cause him to be a part of his every being as well. Thank you. And, yeah. and you will bring that joy to his life because he will understand, well, actually he will bring it to himself. But you will be a catalyst for that. And, Thank you. Uh, and um, he just loves to see you smile. So <laughs> He does. Yes, he does. So therefore, Thank you so much. you're welcome. And what was the second part of the question? I was just wondering if you had any other information for me that would help me in my, um, in my bringing the light out to the world. Is there anything that I can... You're bringing <laughs> light to the world. You bring the light to the world every single day in, in just the way that you are because people are coming to some webinars or hangouts and are not feeling so good, but you bring joy to them. So congratulations and thank you very much.
I love you all so much. Thank you, Takur. Thank you, Jim. I love you, my human colony family. I love you, all my ET families. <laughs> yes. <laughs> much love. I have uh, one more question, Takur, if that's possible. I didn't yes. know you guys were getting ready to go. I just had one more question about uh, another ship, or I was actually in a docking bay when I seen ships coming in and a bean walking by with a glowing uh, aura around them. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about that, if that was the uh, yell or who, what, where? The glowing that you saw around him was the protection for, for the atmosphere. Um, some uh, some spacesuits do not look the same. Some some are energy fields, and that's what you saw glowing. And so it was an energy field around this particular being, and not really their essence glowing, but their technology in protecting them from the atmosphere. So therefore, it was you did see that, and um, it's just a wonderful thing. I I'm not sure I. Yeah. I was just explaining that, so I'm I forgot what the other part of the question was. Uh, I was I was like in a docking bay on the ship, and I was seeing oh, yes. ships come in, lights at a distance. I just wanted to know who that was, or was it a group, or oh, is it, what, that was the, that was a group near function? Yes, it was more than okay. one. There were so there was, was like <laughs> four species there at that time. Yes, four out of the six. Okay, good. So, yes. Yeah. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yes, it was a, a group for near landing bay. It was not on the, the our ship at all, but it was on another ship that is around the United States. The one more out toward California. Okay, well, I'm, I'm ready to come aboard your ship whenever you're ready. No. <laughs> I'm sure there are many that feel the same way. Yeah. That, that, that's all for me. Uh, thank you, and uh, I love you. And like she said, I love my Hukalo family. I love you as well. <laughs> thank you. Booha, Takur. This is Rowie. Hello, Rowie. How are you? And Kim. I'm very well. I'm very excited. Um, I'm just going to quickly speak to Sabrina and ask her about how things are working at your end, and if. Anybody there is wanting to interact with questions, or if that is something they can do later with you in their own time. Um, is there questions within the room? Is there questions here, or do we want to take care of that separately? Okay, we'll take care of it separately. I, I know you're on a time limit, and a bit of a yeah, yeah, we're, we're, I don't want to push you too much. Yes. Okay. I think we're already beyond it. Yes. <laughs> well, to care Maybe. for myself, I'd just like to thank you for your interactions with everybody today um, online. The, the information, as always, was absolutely fantastic. And our love from Australia, from myself and Kim, mm -hmm. as always, goes mm -hmm. to you. And everybody at Sabrina's, thanks, guys. The energy there looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And we were there last night. In Dream State, so we enjoyed it too. So, I hope thank you, you danced. Yeah, we were dancing. I hope you were a part of her dance party. <laughs> Sorry, Higher Self doesn't dance. Sorry, he says. <laughs> he's the maestro, remember? He's the maestro. He doesn't dance. Yeah. But thank yeah. you. Okay. I will bring Jim back then. I believe that's the end, correct? Correct. So thank what you we... so much. I love you all. Namaste. Namaste. The energy Namaste. in this room is quite beautiful. Quite beautiful. Can you all feel it? Yes. yes. We're dancing Aww. with the way. Yes. Yes. You're moving side to side in the back. <laughs> I will all talk to you later. Thank you so much. Love Namaste. You to her. Wow. Wow. All right, so we've, we've got a second hour coming up for you guys. Um, we've got Roxanne and we also have Kim here and there's a possibility, <laughs> look at those eyes, uh, that they will be doing some channeling. So if you guys want to stick around for another hour, 
Um, what we do ask is if you have interacted in the first hour, um, we would like you to make some space for other people to come through because I know there's other people waiting. Um, you can always come back, back in after they've interacted as well. So I just want to put that out to everybody who's in the room today and thank everybody for their amazing questions and interactions. That was so beautiful. Hello, I'm back. Thank you. Welcome back, Jim. <laughs> yes. So before we end, yes, I would like to mm -hmm. invite anyone, wherever you are, for the blood moon, just go out and celebrate the blood moon. And when is that? What date? 22nd. The 27th. The 27th of September. It's the full moon. Check it out in your time zone when it's happening. Find a place, go celebrate, go bask in the energy, bring it in, create some awesomeness in your neck of the woods. Okay? Miraculous things will happen. <laughs> Contracts will be fulfilled. Seals yes. will be broken. You will create so much awesomeness. Bring some friends together. Do things together. It's just rock this world, okay? It's That's the right. day to rock the world. Yes. Well, like, like Sarah said yesterday, make good, make happy, make joy, make love. Do whatever positive thing that there is to do and enjoy that day and bring it, bring that energy to you. All of the above. 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 It's beautiful. Wonderful. Absolutely. And the spirituality around it is wonderful. Oh, who's who's playing the? Uh, okay, the, I've muted. Um, I <laughs> also want to say thank what? you to Sabrina for hosting everybody at your house this weekend. I so much want to be there. Well, we both so much want to be there. It was so. Oh yeah, you certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it worse for us. Cheer up. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, Human coming in. Got a second trip. You're a trip. No time. sleep to be had again. Yes, At least yes. I don't have to channel in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so. I know some people worry about us being too not serious enough at times. But let me tell you this. Um, joy is part of enlightenment. Yeah. Laughter is part of who we are in the third dimension. Love is who we are. And seriousness has its place, and so does laughter, joy, and love. Yeah. And so when we get a, a little bit happy and joyful, I think that only adds to the energy and only adds to the for the aliens wanting to come visit us because that is something they have a, a little too little of, and we give them a lot of. So... Yeah. So and they actually start to have a sense of humor as well. So <laughs> it's really a wonderful thing. And so please don't get caught up that we're not being serious enough because we have all the respect in the world for the aliens. We have all the respect in the world for all those channelers and everyone that does that and spirit and angels and we just have all the respect in the world for you. But there is time for levity, love and happiness. Beneath, especially when you are with so many beautiful people, you can't help but laugh. Can't help it. And, and, and be united in joy. It is. It's just yes. joyful. United in joy. Yes, it's wonderful. And, it, and within laughter, it, it lightens up the heart, and it brings joy to the heart, and it unites people. And as we get closer to each other, it brings up even higher and it's something that unites all humans regardless of where you stand with things. We can all laugh together about something that we did or happened. So right. if if you think that only words spoken by others or spoken by us is enough, really think about it and meditate on that, how laughter really can even bring the whole planet together. Never mind dancing. <laughs> right. But you see, it is also a healing property in laughter that releases those good chemicals in your body that makes you feel faster, feel better, 
and want to be the the true person that you are. Be honest with who you are, and be honest with everybody around you with who you are. So, laughter is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. And so, so, it, so it is. On that note, I want to say goodbye to all the cuckoo of friends over there. <laughs> and have a great second hour. Yes. And, and enjoy yourselves. Have a great second 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sabrina, for having everybody together. This has been the most amazing day to be on both sides of this. It's just been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for facilitating this and opening your home and your heart and making all this happen and co-creating this with Jim and, and Will and everybody that's in your living room. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. And Adriana, thank you, Adriana, Adriana Montserrat, yeah, everybody. Al. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Al, you rock. This is a perfect example. You, you, you realize you just imposed on his free will, don't you? <laughs> well, this is a perfect example of a beautiful manifestation. <laughs> totally. That's right. <laughs> Do you know how many people were manifested here? There were so many people that were manifested here. So many people sensed the awesomeness and decided to be a part of it. Michelle... Drove Those last night. I have to be here. She drove last night. Yep. And Brooke, her daughter. Brooke, 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 So we have it. So we just are manifesting people here all the time, every moment. So. <laughs> So, I think we should close with a very quick blessing, but it is necessary that we close with a with spirit. So, um, I think that I'll just do it today by myself, and we'll just say, um, "Dear Mother, Father, God, thank you for this wonderful time of communication, of connection, of." feeling of understanding of growing of ascending of loving of dancing and laughter we just ask that you be with all of us bring in the love that you you have for us in a in the greatest way possible right now because it is uh, a time of growing and love and laughter and we we will cherish these times in the future because we have work to do as a group and as individuals, and we know that we will be working to help the world ascend, and we'll help others to find love and light, and move away from their sorrow, agony, and pains, and their health problems, and we just thank you and praise you for that already, because we already know those things are on the way, the things of greatness are on the way, we accept them, we love you, and each one of us has a purpose and a and a, a place to be in human colony. There's a place for everyone and a place for each of you as the perfect person that you are. Because do not try to fit into anybody else's mold. It won't work. Fit into who you are and love yourself and then send out the love. After you can love yourself, you can love the whole world. So I just Thank you, Lord, that we have this understanding between us, this love, this connection. Beautiful. And amen. And so it is. And so, and so it, it is. is. And so it is. And so it is. Namaste, everybody. Goodbye. Have a great rest of the weekend. Bye. Another great day. Love you. Bye. Bye. Ready? Yeah. There you go. Bye.
going to be so quiet when you guys drop. <laughs> <laughs> I already got silent. <laughs> okay. Just drop 30 decibels. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, do we follow yeah. that energy? Okay, so... Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> so, stepping up to the mark is our beautiful Roxanne Swainhart, Odyssey of Ascension. If you need to check her out on YouTube, I think pretty much everyone's aware of who Roxy is by now. Um, yes. We're very proud to have her here again with us and being part of our Hucolo group. We're really okay. honoured. Um, Roxy will be doing the guided meditation tomorrow as well at 7 p.m. Absolutely. So, if you're interested. Yeah. Yep. If you're interested in coming along to number two, the guided meditation from Hugh Colo, this is happening every weekend on a Sunday, and this week will be guided by Roxy, because everybody's at Jim's place. So, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> we, no, we're really excited to have Roxy to come and do it, because um, we're all expanding in many different directions, and um, something I've never heard Roxy do before, so I'm happy to push her a little bit as well. Aww, so we're so sweet. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. So, how are you doing, Roxy? Uh, let me, I had to move. Can you guys see me okay? Let me maybe turn on a light. I'm in you another look house. You beautiful, Roxy. I walk Gabriel. Look awesome. Hi, baby. How are you, you doll? Awesome. Hey, oh, can you hear me through my phone? We hear you yes. loud and clear. Yeah, we hear <laughs> loud and clear. Ah, uh, um... When it's uh, it's going to start? Because my parents want me to do something for ten minutes. Um, well, what, we're gonna what's going to stop? Ready? Um, she she doesn't take long for Roxanne to get into uh, channeling state. So if you want to come back in ten minutes, you can do sure. Um, what we're going to do as well is ask that everybody who has asked a question, um, or if they're not in attendance, if they could just leave the room for now. Uh, let us some other people in. That would be really, really kind if you could do that. Um, there's always going to be more chance for other people to come in and ask more questions. Also, I'll be watching the Human Colony Hangout chat boxes. So if there is a, no questions from the audience in the room, then I can do some questions. Uh, well, me and Dan, sorry. Uh, Dan and I, excuse my English, can relay the questions from there. Okay, because I need to move something from um, my parents' house to one of my apartments. So we just take like five minutes and people could start to uh, ask questions before me. And <laughs> I'll Don't get worry, we'll, we'll be here for a while. Yeah, ah, and we'll, we'll, we'll give you some space if you need to come back in. If you allow someone else in for now, we'll make sure you get back in a bit later, all right? Ah, okay, so I will uh, leave and come back. Thank you. That's, that's the You're best welcome. option, yeah. Okay, oh, so open up the room to so everybody um, who's tuning in at the moment. There are a few spaces there if you would like to come in. I know uh, Noha and uh, a couple of other people there were uh, wanting to come on in. So as Roxy gets ready. Um... Okay, so open up the room to so everybody um, who's tuning in at the moment. There are a few spaces there if you Okay, so just a quick reminder, if you are joining the, the webinar, please mute yourselves as we come in. <laughs> Turn off your YouTubes. <laughs> That's perfect. Very good. All right. Okay. Take it away. And greetings once again to the Collective. This is Osiphius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. How are you all today? Anybody? Bueller? We are burning. We have just had one of the most awesome experiences, Osiphius, with oh, the yeah. Hucolo Collective mm. gathering in one location. Mm. Imagine the energy that's going on there right now. Epic. Hmm. Oh, yes. Lots of expansion. And I love the interaction about laughter because it is laughter we're after. There is no idea of seriousness. Seriousness is what you would call a condition. Does it not, in and of itself, that definition change your reality? It scopes in a field of a definition of what is serious. We need to get down to brass tacks so we can ascend more. When the state of being of laughter only opens up the idea of lightheartedness, 
That light hardness unshields you from definition, allowing more things to vibrate within your context of awareness. And that awareness allows you to grasp onto another idea that maybe you would understand as serious, but it wouldn't be truly serious. What it would be is opportunity for expansion, contemplation. The same idea of fun, not the fun of doing cartwheels and licking lollipops, the fun of that of, let's say, Bill Gates sitting in his garage, developing the first home computer, engaged in his own idea of himself, his wisdom, his passion. That is truly fun. The idea of, let's say, Warren Buffett, hmm? philosophizing about the idea of investments. He wasn't worried or serious. He didn't have an outcome in mind. He wasn't trying to shift himself as, the, as well as the world. He didn't look down the road. He was seeing what was there for him. So in the idea of being so serious will definitely, in some fashions, slow you down. Booyah. Hmm. What else we got? Interesting concepts. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. In a not so serious way. Hmm. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? If not, I will speak some more. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't seem to slow down, and it makes me really burnt out. Do you have any uh, suggestions on that? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Let's say a synchronicity is in play because my speaking was going to be on this subject. Oh, yes, most certainly. The idea of slowing down. Hmm? You're playing with time. Look at it as a concept of time. Idealizing yourself to accomplish an idea quicker. Hmm? Let's say some people interacted and they were saying, I hope this happens. I wish this would happen. That's only time. Hmm? It's all happening now. You just have to catch up, it, up to it and with your reality, in your reality. And so idea lies this, this concept. If I'm here and now and I want that idea, then play it out in the patience of that. So in other words, be impatient. Hmm? Not impatient. Be in the world, idealized world of patience. And this is letting go. And you feel, let's say, anxiety. Do you not? You feel a calling to move. That is what you've been taught. That idea of accomplishing, goal setting, goal reaching, becoming, 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 hurrying things along. Hmm? You're running over. You're tripping over dollars to pick up pennies is another term. That idea is to, let's say, trust the now. What's going to happen if you don't act, don't control? Hmm? That's time. Think about it. And if what is going to happen is the exciting part, is it not? Can you allow yourself to really step back and see what's going to happen and not rush life? How many of you drive too fast? How many of you do not sit and eat and enjoy the actual meal? Or just consider it an idea of just shoveling some stuff into your mouth so you can have nutrition, so you can go off and do some more things. Look at your restaurants. Hmm? Your restaurants now, let's say, want to sit, eat, and get out and have those circulation. And it's become a norm in the psyche of humanity. Is You don't go and sit and stay there for an hour or two. But there's so much more you can be doing. You can be going home and getting on your computers or going to watch TV. And as soon as that's done, as you feel yourself in that moment of watching TV or whatever your next event is, where's your thoughts now? Hmm? On the next thing you're going to be doing, you are playing once again with time. You are trying to stuff so much into your life so you can feel complete at the end of the journey. But I am here to say most certainly that every moment is so expansive, it has so much available to you, and you just can't see it because you're scoped in time. You're scoped in the idea of accomplishing whatever else so I can experience and move on to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And then you push up daisies, and you look at it and say, damn, I missed a whole lot, didn't I? Yes. But you can't see what you're missing. You're formalizing what's important for you to be experienced 
based on your definitions of what happiness or worthy experience is. That's what you're doing. That causes a driving force within you, that of control, that of outcome, that of goal setting, that of accomplishing, that of status, to push yourself in that direction to skip over what's truly available right now. And what is available? Everything more than you can ever perceive but it is a process because you have to let go of vibrations of blinding and those vibrations now that are not paid attention to energy follows awareness then that shield leaves and now a new vibratory state in the now is now present and receivable it is within your framework awareness and now in that awareness you can act upon something that was no longer or no, not let's say before realized let go of no longer idealize what was important the change of constant is in play you want to allow yourself to experience what is in the moment and then you will redefine yourself of what is important you will shed the limitations you will shed the construct of fitting in you will shed the construct of what I'm supposed to be doing as a human it is a very large definition that scopes your reality unnoticed most certainly that idea of control that idea of hurrying that idea of wanting without allowing now what's allowing trusting vulnerable saying nothing is important except this moment and you may be looking at a tree and expecting an idea of the tree to do something miraculous that's another awareness of expectation is it not to see the vibratory state of a simple tree is so beautiful so golden so let's say alive and you cannot notice it because you see the tree definition done moving on that's what you're peeling away so you can see yourself as a natural state and that natural state is beyond comprehension at this space time now but this is where you're going make sense darling yeah um, I actually um, because of the subconscious mind programs that I grew up with for this control um, I there's two parts um, mm -hmm. well I discovered in meditation that there is a way to manipulate time uh, but secondly, uh, and building on that, is there a mm, perhaps like technique that's very simple uh, that does not even require meditation to yes. more expanded time allotments that the meditation would and deprogramming uh, techniques for deprogramming that are instantaneous. Be great. Instantaneous deprogramming most certainly is awareness in the moment of what you're seeking, what you're finding valuable. So let's look at it like this. Stop and look around, okay? Right now you want to know the answer. That is your intention. That is your idea of control. You're looking right now for an idea to expand yourself. Hmm? Beautiful. That right there in and of itself is what the control factor is. That is it. You have now recognized what is driving you. The awareness of this recognition is the key. So once you see, hmm, I want to stop meditating, which you've already given yourself the answer. You don't need to. Hmm? What is the answer being now? That's it. You want the most simplistic answer? Now is it, period. So now you know you have the answer in you. Now you have moved from a second ago to this second, and you're still wonderful. You may be seeking. You may be anticipation, but you're aware of that. These awarenesses are the vibratory states that keep you strictured, hmm? keep you within your own box. That's the awareness. You cannot see your own prison idea walls, bars, hmm? until you act upon the now. The now reveals things that pull you away from the now, and now you're in time. And in time is where you will fluctuate within that reality of accomplishment, of creating future realities from your fears of time, from your controls of time, hmm? that kind of idea. So look at yourself in this fashion. I have the answer. I don't feel the answer completely, but I have it. 
because I'm trusting me. I'm God. The idea of Osiphius is just a guide, giving me an answer that I can expand upon. You do not want all the answers. For if humanity set up for the guides to give you all the answers, the ascension would happen 16.3 billion years ago. <laughs> what fun is that? None. Because you don't discover yourself. You don't ascend the species. Because it's a different quality, a context of knowledge that is experienced in the moment by each individual that creates the passion for humanity. That creates the idea of ascending a species from flesh to light. That's where you're journeying. And that, oh yes, is your choice. This is why humanity is so epic. Because there is no infringement. There is no IE help in that fashion of giving the answers without you choosing the answers upon your own self, your self-worth, your self-love, your idea of the adepthood being the ascended master, all of that playing to allow you to trust only one person, you, and you are everything. So there again, you are creating the idea of trust, vulnerable, to allow you to know that you are all that. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Sticky, I know. Yeah. But we're not going to give you a layout. We're not going to graph it. We're not going to give you the answers. We're going to let you discover yourself because I know what you are. I know your God. And I know right there in that space time now of any, any, and all seconds of the now is everything. And you will peel away the shieldings of that everything by allowing ideas to come in. And when it is effortless, that's where you seek, follow, love. If it is conflictive, that is what you choose not, no longer. Make sense? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Welcome to yourself. Is that all, Chris? Yeah. Okay, Enough. perfect. Um, Osiphius, we have Gordon with a few macro questions for you. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you, Roy. Greetings, all. Dad of Gordon, booyah, how are you? I'm well. I'm doing extremely well in this, in this moment. Um, as Roby voiced, I'm having a lot of excitement right now designing structures and mm -hmm. um, larger scale uh, community and society um, structures. And mm -hmm. from my perspective, I've really found that the most efficient way to go about this is kind of a clean slate approach and giving a new proof of concept, a new model for which um, the current model can take certain um, ideas from and slowly, you know, my dream is uh, move towards, transition from the current uh, models we have in business and various practices on this planet that, you know, are obviously not doing what's in the best interest for the long term and, and the holistic type of thinking. Yes, because there is no long-term and there is no holistic type of thinking. Because once again, that is a stricture. Period. Mm. Make sense? Uh, yes, we go a little more into detail on that. Well, the idea of what you're creating to restructure the structures. Hmm? Everything is expanding. Excellent. Mm. You don't have any concern of what it's going to turn out as. Why? Because then you will limit yourself what it, the possibilities of it can be. Because what you are expecting will only influence your guided own self of your, let's say, egoic self to pull up out of memory bank hmm, an idea that would seem to fit in where it's going. Because you've limited yourself along that track. You're looking through a scope of what you call a sniper rifle. Hmm? You've drawn down on an outcome in the distance. You don't want that. You want the now to see what's possible. And it will be out of bounds at a lot of time. But now we play the game of patience to allow it to coalesce with that. <laughs> that coalescing will give you an idea that is so beyond but yet comprehensible by you. This is what you're going to bring in. A structure that is not to, let's say, within the grasp of most of the collective. In other words, the collective will catch up with you on your ideas. But you are putting groundwork in, as you all are. 
The groundwork is most rich, most full, most exciting when it is untethered by the mind of the past. The egoic definitions. We have said many times, definitions, beliefs, all give you an idea of a reality of limitation because you are pulling from the past on a definition. This is why nameless, no definitions, is the best way. You don't know what it is. It's an idea. Let's see where it goes. And as you are moving, you will give it definable ideas for people to pull themselves out of the past into the future, if you will, and understand this new concept that you're bringing, how humanity will work. Right now, you're all looking at one idea of one global idea, let's say, government, one idea of money. Hmm? But it is way beyond that. It will shift so far, you will not even recognize the idea of money. Make sense? Yeah. That's where you're going. But right now, we can't see that because we don't know how it would work. You're Right now, you're all that are trying to take things. How can you have this without an idea of money or even an exchange? What's going to be that? How does that truly work? And you're pulling from the resources of your past experience. This is why that now is always having a higher vibratory state of awareness. That awareness gives you how it's going to work. And you are piecing it together as you move through the patience of time. Make sense? Yeah, so I guess the tricky part for me and the experience I'm having is, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, is building into the structure an organic, integrative, adaptive process always in the now. So basically... Mm. Having it built within the now as its integral, you know, roots. You know, we're, we're a change is the normalcy. You know, we're constantly, oh, to, we're constantly in, to, to the new awareness we're getting in every new now. So, yes, tricky part is um, that's, that's where I'm right. I think with and resonate with is we need to build things that have change built within them that have integration and adaptability built within them. So they're constantly. Um, growing with the, the new growth of every now and awareness. And we're not limiting ourselves, we can say, based on the idea, oh, oh, this is the best model of the wheel or whatever. You know? So, yes. um, I guess for me, it's trying to, I guess the best thing, um, as far as structuring it, is just having the built in assumption that. All right, hang on, stand by. <clears throat> Greetings, Sylvester here. How are you? Doing well. All right. Now, let's, let's talk about this. Let's look at yourself. I don't give a rat's ass about what's going to happen in the future. I don't care what you're trying to make yourself become. Listen to your words. This is the awareness I want you to talk about. Listen, 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 listen. Tricky. Tricky is a definition. Tricky means this idea is greater than you. Bullshit. Tricky. There's no tricky. And what's best for me in the future. That means what's best for me is a future. That means time. That means limitation. That means shielded reality. Are you following that? Yeah. It's really a son of a bitch for humanity to step back and say, holy shit, I don't need to do anything until the moment moves me to do that. Mm -hmm. Right? You're scoping, and that's fine. That's fine. It's okay to have that future idea of dreams and passions, and that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the intention of what it's supposed to be with time, which will scope you into a reality of, <gasps> hmm, and that reality conditions, that reality limits. Are you following? Yes. Keep talking. Don't think too much. Let it come I in. It's just, I guess for me, semantics of... Mm. Um, Great word, semantics. Now you've defined yourself in the structure of semantics. That's what I'm talking about. And now you're going, well, fuck, how do I even communicate? You don't. You relax and not judge it, but expand from it. Mastery word care. Oh, yes. Keep going. Say the word semantics, just the awareness. <laughs> Now you're smiling. Awesome. Let's start with this. What's your dream? Um, well, a lot of it was actually shown today. 
in the in you know in this seminar right now, but previously um, creating a hub for uh, uninhibited um, opportunity for people to who experience their highest assignment and, and actually have the ability to bring that catalyst to life. So creating okay. a, a community that's showing a new proof of concept that we can yeah. have a new way society um, is structured to allow for people to follow their highest assignment and not be um, distorted Limited. by fears. Yeah, not having a fear-based yeah. system or a love-based system. Okay, that's the dream. Yeah. But when you, you start acting on this, when you define it as supposed to be something, this is where you want to be aware of yourself. That's where you will limit it. You got to remember, humanity is not stupid. Humanity is gods. They're lost, forgotten, journeying home gods, period. And if you define anyone as in trouble or the society as needs to be saved, then you're fucking yourself. Why? Because you're defining your reality as that, Yeah, my darling. This is not about me, and it's not about the people in this room. It's about you. You are creating this reality. This reality is attracting to you right now. You want to give a higher vibration to have people explore themselves. Don't think humanity can't handle it, and they need A, B, or C, because then you will only scope the reality of humanity needing A, B, or C. Yeah. So what you do is keep putting it out there, okay, in the fashion of limitless, excitable, and with no intention on the outcome, period. You are blossoming yours. I know, Osifia said, I know Bill Gates didn't know, didn't care, didn't dream that after, before when he started, started building that home computer, he didn't even think about what, what the outcome was going to be. He didn't have a dream to have it in every, until after it was built. But leading it to it was passion, was uninhibited, and that created it, and he pulled. All you got to do is look at Tesla. Same idea. He didn't care what it was going to do. He was in a playground, and he used all the tools, the physical and mental, to bring in this world, his dreams, and you're doing it the same. And it's done through the intention of passion for fun. And if it looks like a job, oh, that's not your path. There's something else. There's something uninhibited waiting for you on the outskirts of your framework. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I agree. So, yes, you got this dream, but keep the dream a dream. Humanity gets a dream and then all of a sudden, oh, it got to happen like this. It should happen like this, but it doesn't fit that. And then you just diarrhea all these definitions onto it and the dream becomes an idea that's mediocre, accept it or not. That's why outcome, that's why expectation, your guy, what's his name, Bashar, he says that idea. Don't expect because you will give yourself the unicorn instead of the pony on Christmas morning. Yes. Expectation, you will only get a pony. Make sense? Yeah. This is I, your world. I'm uh, here for you. It's not the outcome. Your vibrational creation of the self is how this will be perceived. How it will be created. Through what you are resonating as in the moment. But time pulls you out through the limitations of the past construct of humanity, taught belief systems that you put into your blueprint as well as all the others in the room, into your blueprint to heal. So you give yourself challenges of that to know you don't need to choose that. And that not choosing that allows a higher vibratory state of accomplishment in your terms to present itself. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree completely. It just, um, I see exactly what you're saying. It just becomes it's hard. It's an ass kicker, isn't it? Well, it just becomes hard <laughs> for me because I run into people who, um, I'm following my highest excitement, and I'm putting together this with my father and another gentleman who we're all just doing this for, you know, we, we love it for all the right reasons you're speaking to. Yes. And, you know, money's just, at the end of the day, we know it's the last thing and it's the only thing, you know, it's there because it's there and it just has to sustain. Um, but 
when we get down to, okay, we want this to really become a reality and we're just following our highest excitement and, and doing um, as you're speaking to, I still have to, you know, meet these certain, you know, third density expectations of, okay, give us financials, give us, you know, the business yes. model, writing the business plan. And so that has to create a certain level of expectations for the other people who have that as they're still the reality being the basis for how we get business or startups done. Right. And so it makes me be like conditioned to kind of be like, oh, well, I have to think of it in this way because this is how we're... Okay, time. Whatever. I understand what you're saying, but you don't have to. That's trusting. Because you think there's one Earth. Oops. There's billions of Earths. So when you go to that meeting and you present the way you want to present, unlike the idea of the model that everyone is expecting, you created a new Earth right there. It's your bubble doll. It's your co-created earth that you're attracting the people of your vibratory reflection to see your love. And they will be open. They will not be expecting because you're going in there as that. It's you that create your reality. So if you're saying they will expect certain business models to do A, B, or C, then you will play in the field of that. However, you can go and offer something different to them. Yeah. That's what lies in your field. That's but what we're trying to do. Once again, it's not try. Uh, 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 because yeah, try is time. That's what we're doing. That's what's coming. That's what you're allowing. That's what you're trusting. That's what you're open to. To see how fucking awesome you are. Make yeah. sense? Yeah, I agree. It's about time. You know, it's 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 possible. It's it can be created, and you know, we're doing that. And yeah. Um, yeah. We know whoever's going to resonate that with that will will be there, and that's something. For me, that's the biggest thing: is trusting in the fact that it will come. I, and I can you can you imagine your life if you trust it only the moment? Think about it. It's amazing. I mean, you look at people like the Aboriginal people who who live completely based off that way every day, not even. And, and right. I know, you know, like I, I see you know modern examples on this planet, you know, um, and it takes it's. It's fucking hard, but I, I give a lot of respect, you know. <laughs> it is hard, but that's the challenge. That's why the masters are on earth, yeah. not the first go around. Your, quote, old souls have been done this a lot of times at this great awakening. That's why you guys are here. You woke up because you understood it. That understanding gives this idea of a fractal conscience the opportunity with all of the lives of experience in the now, future and past, going, you've got this because you've done this. You understand it. So you recognize the limitations and you act upon them in a new fashion, a new vibration, which heals it and offers more expansion. So you got this. Yeah. Yes. I Tough though. <laughs> I love it because you guys are right down in the nitty gritty and you are moving a species. Yeah. A species an entire civilization into the next density. We discount that humanity. But holy shit. Thank yeah. God. No, it's powerful. Don't I, rush it. It's a good way Always to... remember. Hang on, let me say this. Always remember humanity. Always remember this. Listen, 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 listen. Let's say 100, uh, what is it, 19... Right at the 1850s, 1900, horse and buggy for the last 2,000 years before that, you know? Horse and buggy. No air conditioning, no cars, no technologies, no computers. Hmm? Yeah. Think about mass food. Think about it. Think about how fast you've moved in the last 100 years. But now that you're in the, that movement, you want it to hurry the fuck up. We know that. But you don't want to move it in the fashion of time. Allow it. You've come so far so quick, and it's this mass chaos. And everyone's like, oh, my God, there's so much going on. And that's why then you escape into your technologies and give yourself ideas of rest time. We understand that. <laughs> but humanity has moved so quickly in the last hundred years in comparison since what you guys on your conceivable receivable timeline context. Make sense? Yeah, no, it's been expedited extremely fast. And then just 
not only with technology and stuff, but then running into in 2012 the whole energy growth from entering the oh, yeah. And So it's just this whole multiplier effect where people are just now like super anxious, super fearful, or just super, yeah. like, you know, with extremely polarized energies. You know, because like, truly, know. truly, everyone on Earth knows. Everyone has the inherent built-in knowing that this is a game. That this is not the idea of just humanity. I'm not a haphazard idea. I'm not a victim to an angry God. All of that. And they can't figure it out, so they are pushing themselves, and it looks like chaos. But then the light workers are there. And when they're ready, hmm, they'll come. Yeah. yeah. I know right? it's... Yeah, no, I know it's positive growth. It just it's it's speed. Of course, it's positive. It can't be negative. Yeah. Even negative is positive because negative is allowance of new choices. Ta-da! Think about it. Yeah. Right. Yep. I appreciate okay, Gordon. It. I'm staying All right, baby doll. You look good. I like your hair. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, what else? Sure. I think you're up next. Hey, Eusebius. What's no, up? it's Sylvester. Huh? It's Sylvester. Sylvester. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, this is Shiro from Israel. Greetings. What up, um, <laughs> Who are you just to be? I'm familiar with the Eusebius. I am Roxy's Abraham. Eusebius is Roxy's Bashar. I sit, so above, I sit above Osiphius. Osiphius is a fractal of me. I am Osiphius' oversoul. Put it that way. That's, that's a good lineup. Make sense? If hmm. you guys need that construct of visualization of well, I know how that it he's works. a star or something like that. So Say you're again? like, he's a star or a star system or something like that? Well, that's what he's incarnating at. But he's a hmm. fractal of me. The best, hmm. the best way to... Best way to notice this is um, Osiphius, eyes closed, and Sylvester, eyes open. So there that's go, the best way of seeing guys. Mm. Okay. Well, Clever. Sylvester, I'm now um, studying the um, channeling, and I'm wondering if you can see how much is it open or something. I know that I'm supposed to challenge a certain um, a race, race of Remlek, and... It's something okay. in my uh, spiritual call, uh, spiritual. Um, how do you name it? Contract. Urging. <laughs> calling. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm yes. So, what is your question? How do I fucking start to channel? By starting the channel. Here, watch. Ready? <clears throat> yes. You watching? Okay. Holy shit, this is sheer, I'm channeling. I don't know what the fuck to say, but I'm just going to keep talking and allow my thoughts to just flow through me, and I'm just not going to worry about what it is, what the outcome is, or anything. I'm, gonna I'm just going to channel, 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 channel. Ta-da! Wow. Thank That's you very it. much. This is Get amazing. on the fucking bicycle and ride it. Get on the horse. Go. See it. Because here. Da, 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 da. Boom. Gotcha. Here's what's holding you back. You ready? What's yes. the outcome? Oh, the outcome is time. The outcome is expectation. The outcome mm. keeps you paralyzed. Act you on just it. move. <laughs> move yourself. Engage in it, and then let it unfold. That guy mm. again. God, this guy's really good, Bashar. I like this guy. I'm just getting all his downloads. This guy said what? All truths are truth in the moment. So now was my truth. I'm channeling A. Now it's B. Now it's C. Now it's D. You are evolving. Roxy started channeling two years ago. And now she reached this vibratory state of allowing me to come through because she can hang with this frequency. Hmm. Right? But she started off with this. But if you go back and watch her first videos, you know, she has evolved quite a bit. She looks back at herself and she goes, damn, what was I thinking? Well, she was the thinking of the best her at that time. But now she sees it as like, wow, look how long and how long and how long I've evolved into this new idea of me. Bingo. But you got to start. You got to put one foot in front of the other. You got to put well, one I foot down. I churned down. my lungs. <laughs> we started by churning our lungs. Yeah. But what, what's the name of the civilization? Starts with what, an R? 
Ramlek. Ramlek. Ooh. Cool. Nice species. Kind of funky looking. <laughs> funky wow. looking? Why? They told me they look like elves, maybe naked elves. Oh, yeah. Naked elves. Very common on Earth. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, according to him and my brother over there, I'm his son. And I'm supposed to come back to them in like a couple of reincarnations and to do a couple of stuff here. Yeah, don't worry about that though. I want yeah. you to focus on who you are right now. Get in front of the mirror and say, this is the game I'm in. Because this causes the other things to happen. Right? No, that's cool. Yeah. I have so start channeling. Sit doing... down. Put, wait a minute. Time. No. Sit down. Put a recorder on. View yourself. Or you can do it. What do you guys call it? automatic writing? Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But just start and listen and trust those words because those words will shift from the filter to the unfiltered original thought from your higher self. <laughs> okay, I understand that. Now, 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 now. All truths are truth. Being You're never more. expanding. Booyah. <laughs> You're climbing the ascension ladder. Uh, you quite funky yourself. Oh, yeah. Shit, yeah. Why not? Um, another question. Mm -hmm. In the Blood Moon, first of all, I have, no, I have kind of a notion what it is. Something about us getting information from the center of the galaxy and um, I don't know, whatever. Everyone says completely different things. Some say we're going to ascend to the fifth density. Some saying that we're just going to, I don't know, open uh, certain things in our DNA, in our mind. Some said that Israel is going to ruin itself because it's Israel. Everyone says the Torah, the Torah. You know what I mean? Yes. What can you say about it? Because people here are freaking out. We had a desert so of where seven days and people think that it's the end of the world. There's awesome. nowhere to calm them. <laughs> yes, because I know... Awesome for them. True. Here it is. Wait a minute. <laughs> All of them are right. Every single one. Which you one think do you? Awesome. Hmm? Which one do you choose? No, I choose the other one. Okay then. That's the end of it. <laughs> Trust that. I'm talking to God. I'm not talking to a God trying to figure it out in the future because now you're caught up in time. You get to choose what the blood moon means to you. And, you, right. and it will do right so? Of course. Because yeah. you're saying so. Is the mirror not perfect? Don't forget that. What you put out is what you get back. So here comes the blood red moon. It's going to be awesome. The mirror says, oh, shit, you're putting out awesome. Here's awesomeness. Ta -da. It doesn't matter where I'm going to be because I'm going to London that um, exact uh, date. I'm going to Wait be in London or something. Time. There is no yeah. London. Everything is here and now. You only define it as London. London mm. doesn't change you. You change London. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. See so how you're much to you are affecting your reality? See how much you create your own reality bubble? Forget about all the other ones around you. The mm -hmm. one that you are experiencing is a direct reflection of your vibratory state and awareness of yourself. Okay. So if I'm determined that the Blood Moon going to give me the ability to shoot laser for my eyes and levitate, that's exactly what it's going to do? Do you doubt it? Yes. <laughs> then no, it will not do that. When you understand it is not an idea of doubt, then you can have, no have that ability. It. However, it's let's crazy. look at it. Wait a minute, time. Why yes. do you want to have lights? Shoot out of your eyes. Why do you want to levitate? So you can you show awesome. other people how fucking cool you are, you egoic bastard. <laughs> but we love you. Make sense? That's my purest... Don't try, to don't try to become the miracle. You already are the miracle. And when you love yourself more and create your choices of joy, you only beam the light lighter, brighter, shinier. For the lost mm -hmm. ones to shepherd in, you are the lighthouse. Yes? I already knew that. Yeah. All right, then be that. So what intention should I have for the blood moon? Because 
no one really ex explained what is it going to do. That's your so, lesson in this now. You don't need okay. anyone explain. Mm -hmm. Right, Rainbow? It's whatever you want it to be. Okay, do we have any... Kick ass report? and take names. Kick ass and, put, and pick names? Take names. Take a definition, take redefine, redefine until divine. Take it, take it, Fine. take it, take it. What is the redefine best intention until divine. that I What's should that? focus on? What is None. the best intention to focus? To focus? None. None. When you None. get there, you will know. But when you go there with no expectations, no intentions, then I aren't no you... Because I have then no idea what it is. Bingo. That's the perfection of it. But your mind is saying, I need to know. No, you don't. Who are you trusting? That or you? I say you. And then when you get there, you will know what to do because it will be available to you because you're existing at a higher vibratory state, which allows more frequencies to come in of opportunity of expansion. Uh -huh. It's about the sheer show. It's not about the blood moon. These are all tools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay, let's just wrap it out with... Do you have any personal messages from anyone who wants to speak with me? Any being, something? Yes, the entity, the entity that is been speaking to you and waiting for you to start to speak. You were cut off. Can you start it over again? Because you were cut off. Can you guys hear me? All right. Can go ahead and. The entity, through yes. the civilization that you're going to bring to humanity as a channel, a reality mm -hmm. yet to be perceived, but most certainly it is not a possibility. Now it is a probability. Big difference. That probability is you acting upon and trusting this entity that's going to come through. That's the message. In other words, in your concept, he's waiting. <laughs> Waiting for the Messiah. <laughs> okay, well, Sylvester, this was very intriguing. You are one of a kind, to say the least. And so Thank are you. you. And when you Thank realize you. that, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I'm going to high-five you when I'm going to come to the Oversoul. Excellent. We'll see you then. Bye. My doll. Momentum, you're up. Rainbow. Dan, your big head's on the screen. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Momentum, no, okay. are you able to talk? Um, is your microphone working? Um, might have a little problem. Let's let's skip to Noha while Momentum's getting his microphone. Is it now? Is it now? Oh, yes, there you go. Now. Yes. Sorry, yes. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Sylvester. Yeah, yeah. Rainbow Box, aka okay? Momentum. Yes, we uh, know. Loving you, loving light, loving living. Oh yeah. Uh, I've been doing what you've been saying on our communications. It's been fucking amazing. Yes. Uh, living in the moment. Uh, collapse in time in that sense. Really focusing on it. And my life is. Expanded much to my benefit. I'm still going to well, live out a timeline on the lines of job, just because I find that fun. Fuck it. That if it's fun, I'm then being. do it. I'm an eternal being. Um, I don't really have questions. I just wanted to say thank you, really, because like the things you share, Bashar says, and all that. It's until you do it, until you do it, it's just bullshit in your head. It's like who oh, you. Yeah. Love I it. I do the channeling. Until you do it. Love it. Keep going. Like, I, I do the channeling, and it's fun. But it doesn't really I excite me. I get good communications out. And all it is is just myself speaking to myself. It's fucking epic. And it's good yeah. advice. And it's like, why don't I follow it? It's because you don't do it enough. You've been so... You've cut, like, clust, clust and choked yourself so much because you've been so unaware. But now... All the processes of the ayahuasca, like I knew it. I knew it from the start. Come on. We knew it from the start. We all know it. All these yes. games we're playing with aliens and that, 
that's why I love you, because you cut to the chase. You, you just get straight to the point. That's why I love you, because it's not, not about all this crap about future, past, blah, blah, blah. It's just, I'm God. That's it's it. about you, and it's, it's about simple. now. Bingo. Yeah, and I'm, I'd say one thing I would like to ask is sure. why do we have this inherent, um, inherent, what's, oh, I knew the word, um, like hate for things, you know, like when you find something new, you have this, sorry, inherent animosity. Like mm -hmm. one of my friends when I was working with, he picked up this caterpillar, it's for hairy caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking in my head, are you mad? Could they could be poisonous, blah, 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 blah. And I was thinking, why am I thinking that? This guy is, he's one of the nicest guys in the world. He enjoys life. He travels everywhere. He, he's like me, but he has no fear. And he just picked up his caterpillar, and I was like, oh, I would never do that. And I was like, why would I never do that? Stop being fearful. Just do it. So now yes. there's like loads of caterpillars in my garden. Yeah, I was like, oh. Are you mad? But, um, <laughs> but yeah, and I just wanted to say thank you. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm getting it. I mean, I take some cannabis sometimes. That really helps, but then I don't rely on that. Do a bit of the other stuff. But then I don't rely on that. But it just really shows the vibrations I'm feeling, all my feelings, everything, definitions. Like, definitions are an amazing thing, like, when you really look into it. Definitions are fantastic, just really Absolutely. getting it. And, like, what they mean to me. Like, my definitions are different to everyone else's. Like, I have friends or I have conversations with, and I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that meant that to you. And it's really, when you put everything into perspective, it's fucking simple because it's automatic. It's yes. automatic. It's there from the start. You say it, it is. You say it, it is. You might not be able to hear it, but when you dig deep, it's there. You know it. You knew it all along. You knew it all the time. We need to stop this playing around. We need to get it done now because that's all there is to now. And we, it's not games anymore. It's fun. But this whole going la, 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 it's like the silliness. Is like, just get to, get to the point. And that's why I just want to say thank you because you're the kind of channel that I love to hear because you just get to the point you don't laugh about you don't fuck about you just say it as it is and that's why I always say thank you and thank you to this whole group for setting this up because that's that's what it is it's about helping all of us get to the point where we just get it and we already do so thank you you're welcome you're rocking keep it up right yep booyah we like saying that Thank you, Momentum. That's uh, and thank you for being part of our community and coming in today. Um, thank you for your interaction. Who's up? Hello. Who's next? It's me. Hello. How are you, Sylvester? The snow hub? Wonderful. How are you? Great. Good. Uh, it's good to see you. I've been trying to get through for a long time, but now I got the chance. Thank God. Okay. Perfect I'll say now. my question with. Thank yeah. You. Right. Thank you. I'll uh, say my question really fast because my system keeps on getting me out. So my question is, uh, lately I've been getting the knowing, the, the, the knowing of anything, you know? So that means I'm channeling somehow, isn't it? Oh, well, yes. Sure. So I want to develop it more in order to get You're... into the channeling state. Okay. Hang on real quick. You're unfiltering yeah. what's available. Make sense? Un unfiltering or filtering? You're unfiltering. Everyone is filtered uh -huh. at birth. Remember, let's, let's give you the structure of the Logos. The Logos is the guy, if you will, that started this whole idea of this particular universe you're living in, this galaxy. Not just the, not just the uh, what do you guys call it, Milky Way. We're talking about a million different galaxies. That one Logos has said, here's the idea, and you guys start playing within the field through what you call experiences of time. You come up with the structure of the veil. That veil has what you call filters. That's the veil. So, yes, okay. you're unfiltering. Everything comes through in original thought, and it is only what you call distorted by you and the current value you're putting in that filter. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're unfiltering to allow this in. So epic. So what am I supposed to do? Uh, Nothing. I'm getting the know-how. I'm getting not the know-how, the knowledge. I'm getting the knowledge. Yes. The knowing. I have the sense of knowing very strongly, which is right all this, most of the time. But I want to develop it into the channeling state. This is my point. So what you said right. earlier, get into it, get into it. Okay. I'm there, but nothing. my mouth is not opening up, you know. That, that is 
is what I'm looking for. Are you? Do you have thoughts in your mind? Right now? Now, when you go into your channeling state? Um, no, when I, the know-how, the know, the knowing, you know what I'm trying to say. I know it on the spot. When and whatever ideas come through, I have the yes. knowing. You know? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is good, which is right most of the time. Like a question pops in my no, mind, no, and then no, 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 stop! It's right all of the time. It becomes a new right, a new truth. There is no it's most all... of the time. Don't yeah, kick yourself right, in the right. ass for that. Not stop. True, true. Listen to you that right. definition that kicks your ass. Most of the time okay. means I failed. Failure is an no, idea no, no, no. of limitation. You're right. You're right. Right. Most of the you time, I got right. the knowing. <laughs> Of and course. so are you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, keep going. Yeah, I, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there all the time. Okay, <laughs> it's the opening part of my mouth that I'm really oh, waiting so eagerly for. You know what I mean? This is my point. I, I'm into what he said earlier to that guy before me or the one before before him. Me, I'm there on the spot. I know it. I'm, I'm feeling it, but nothing is coming out still. You know, this is the butt part. Yeah. I hate. What can I say? No, don't hate <laughs> it. Feel it. Feel it's it. The butt word? No, wait a minute. That butt is telling me I'm limited because it's not exactly. working in the way I'm supposed to think that I'm thinking it's supposed to work. Again, you're defining yourself in an expectation of a certain outcome based on what channeling is. Okay. So that means embrace sense? it. Embrace it. Yes. yes. And allow it in patience. <laughs> I get you now. Yes, yes, yes. Embrace it, and, and then you get you. through. Don't. Yes, I get you now. Right, right, right. Yes. That's it. Okay, Sylvester. Anything you want to tell me extra regarding any anything on store in store for me or something? Or you've got got everything? I've asked you the question that is urging right now, which is uh, just said it. But if you have something to say extra, tell me, please. All right, <clears throat> just know, listen, and this is a kind of for everybody, just know when you have that fear in time of what's supposed to happen, what's going to happen, that's you creating what's supposed to happen and what's going to happen. So now you can allow yourself to trust the now and vulnerability to the now is what creates the most epic experience of the now because you're not inhibiting it with a protection idea of a defined outcome based on the past so keep being now to the best of your ability and watch you skillfully the adepthood that you all are come into play and trust every now one second at a time and watch the beauty of your un unfoldment before you to where it will melt your heart melt your soul and you will only fall in love with the person that you are. Make sense? Much love. Thank you very much. We'll appreciate it. You're welcome, though. Who's up? Chris Can is I... up. Chris, you ready? Oh, Mitra? Oh, okay. Hi, how are you? Can I talk? Uh, yeah, let's go, go ahead, Mitra first. Um, let's... Uh, let's um, People who haven't spoken first, please, Chris, okay. and then you can go after. Chris didn't want to go. She passed it over. Thank you. Can I talk? Yeah, Mitra, go ahead. Yeah, Mitra. Uh, hi, how are you? This is Mitra. Much love hi, Mitra. and good life to everybody. And you as well. What's up? Thank you. Uh, the first question is uh, ask no uh, do I uh, finish my contract or not the finishing any contract contract in and of itself was a stepping stone that birthed itself in the human psyche in about the 80s so a contract is an idea of understanding that why it's playing out it feels comfortable it's a little obligation but it feels comfortable oh I'm contracted to do this can you break a contract? Yes. Do you want to break a contract? You don't have to. You want to? Then do so. But here's the question. If you feel guilty about 
let's say, breaking a contract, hmm, then you know you're obligated and there's no obligation, which the contract in and of itself, the purpose of knowing you're obligating yourself to an idea. If you didn't even have the term contract, you guys wouldn't have contracts. Ta-da! Do you know uh, something happened uh, when I realized about, uh, about my life and uh, about 20 years ago, every time when somebody needs help is coming to me and uh, I, or I protect uh, that people and I give a lot of love and uh, everything that, that person wants. And after that, uh, when uh, everything is going uh, um, very good, and that person is disappeared. This is, for me, what you cannot believe, 100 times. And uh, a month ago, I channeling, and uh, that, that time I realized in my past life, I was a monster and now. And I said, oh, that's the reason I'm here. Because I was so proud of help the people, and right now I'm here because I have to help everybody. But this is a proud. This is not is a in the good you know in the good way. This is something bring uh, proud from other life. And uh, right now make me sick when somebody call me needs help. And after two or three times when something good happen, no contract. And that one, that make me sick. And uh, every time my husband, when he needs energy, he takes a lot of energy of me. But when I need energy, nobody is there. And that's the reason right now. And that moment, I had a lot of meditation. I have a lot of pray for receive uh, much and life from uh, this moment, from September. But right now I'm so angry and I'm so tired and if somebody call me I said don't answer it because they need your energy and this is something you proud of them you proud of that give the energy but this is, is not good way you know that's the reason I'm so curious maybe I didn't uh, finish my contract all right stop 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 <clears throat> There is no such thing as finishing a contract in another lifetime because it's the same idea as karma, guys. Everything is now, so you're punishing yourself for something that hasn't fucking happened yet. Okay? So you didn't finish a contract. There are no contracts to finish. That's you saying this is the reason why all of these people are coming to me and getting my energy. A, you're saying that they're giving you're giving their energy and you're not getting back, which is bullshit because you're all the energy. That's a definition of separation. You're here in this moment to choose what that your obligation to a contract to help. So in other words, if you guys start out in life as an, these awakened masters that you guys are in that idea to be helpful, will you not get an endless line of people needing help? To the point you're going, shit, I need my me now. And that's where you have arrived. Because you said, I want to help. And the mirror gave you, help, help me, help me, help me, help me. And now you're like, oh my God, I'm so sick of this. Yes, because you're done with that reality, but you're still defining yourself as the helper, so therefore the mirror reflects that. You're saying that people are taking your energy, so you feel you're not, not getting any back. All of this is for you to stop. Step back and look at the big picture of yourself and go, holy cow, look at all the definitions of myself. I don't need contracts because there are no contracts in my new reality. Why? Because it's your reality. It's your choice. It's your definition that reflects the mirror. So if you say you're going to break a contract or you didn't, then you have that obligation in time, which has nothing to do with anything now. Think, make sense with that first part. Are you, are you with me on that, yes or no? Yes, I'm good. Okay, so now that you see you've been defining yourself in a particular way, what else do you expect in the mirror? You want the mirror to change without you changing? If you're angry, love that anger. 
Go into it and beat the pillow up if you want and get mad and go out and yell and scream and get that energy out. Otherwise, it will coalesce and give you some kind of disease or something or some kind of reaction of physical to another or an abuse to another. You'll get angry with someone because you're moving that blame. Wait. So what you do is you explore that anger, feel that anger, love that anger, and be in that moment and go, oh, this is not me. And then all of that goes away. All of it. There's only peace left because you've let go of what is inhibiting you. You're not supposed to be anything to your husband. You're not supposed to be anything to the idea of the ascension world, what it means. What am I supposed to be? And you are giving yourself a huge kick in the ass going, hey, you don't need to be this anymore, darling. What you want to be is a different you. But you need to see what you don't like about yourself. And that's why you're feeling it. And now you can choose different by saying, no, I don't want to help anymore. I need to spend time with this, my love for myself, so I can become a higher vibration to allow me to help in effortless ways not confined ways. And your help is not an intention. It just is you by offering love, light, serenity, peace, hmm? different perspectives, knowledge, wisdom, channeling. But you're not allowing yourself because you confine yourself once again to different definitions from the past, which exists now, hmm? and that's where you're shifting yourself to. Are you following? Yes, and uh, do you think that's that's the reason I have autistic kids? The reason for autistic kids is not that, no. The reason of autistic kids is because you and the autistic kid chose to be that idea. So you get to experience it for whatever reason. But don't think you have a reason behind it because then you will scope yourself into the reason behind it that you've defined it as. The moment is what it is. The moment is what it is between you and the autistic child. It's not a definition of autistic. It's an idea of an entity experiencing reality that the non-autistic people can't perceive. So they're helping the idea of humanity to see things in different ways through their way of communication, their thoughts, their awakened ideas. What they see in their mind is way beyond comprehension of a lot of other idea entities. So they can offer different variations of vibrations through this modality known as autism. But don't define it as that. Just be the moment of that and watch what's available. Are you following? Yes, yes, yes. That's perfect for me. Yes. Fuck yeah, it's perfect. You wrote it. I didn't. You just told me what to say. Oh, thank you. And uh, do you have any message for me? Yeah. Just love you, baby. Love yourself. Thank you. Look, your energy is down because you perceived it down because you perceive yourself giving all this work out. Here's what you can do for yourself. If you choose, it's up to you. Start loving yourself. Give yourself a break from the validation of being a, a healer or a, let's say, spiritualist. Give yourself a break from that. Let it go and just melt into yourself. Pamper yourself. Spend money on yourself. Love yourself. Make yourself feel good. And then you'll release all that anger, all that pain. Okay. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Okay, so the last uh, interaction we have for tonight is uh, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Chris, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> I have a few questions. Well, like, it's kind of... I'll just speak. Um, there you right. go. <laughs> so... I have a thing where my third eye gets hot a lot, and I kind of want to understand that more. I saw a UFO the other day. I hadn't seen that type in a few years, and specifically since I've been living in this location that I just moved back to, uh -huh. I'm thinking there's a correlation to that, and um, I forgot my last question. Well, let's start with the first. Oh, the beings that want to... Uh, communicate through or, or want I want to know like who's in the forefront right now okay well let's start with the third eye thing it's getting hot mm -hmm. like right now what, <laughs> okay 
Well, yeah, because let's say you gave yourself a gift, okay? Everyone starts with an idea of a blueprint of probable realities, you know, of all of these. It's like uh, you slide down the slide at a playground and you got all these different colored balls in there and then one person picks up the yellow and the other probable self picks up the red and the other one picks up a blue. So it doesn't matter where you go, they're all being taken care of. So you've chosen this predictable reality, unpredictable, predictable reality, to follow along, and now you're experiencing the idea of the third eye in its form, hmm, in its form of its natural state. It's hot. That's your mind translating as hot because you're feeling a direct connection to infinite intelligence, purple ray band, if you will. It's still being filtered because your mind is, and that kind of causes the resonation of heat. That kind of idea. But accept it is the first thing. Accept it. Accept it. Accept it. Okay. And then you get to see what it can do. Hmm? Yeah. I want you to be able to have this vision. Hang on. Okay. We can, we can tell you this. Yeah. You have two sites. Okay. You have the, let's say, the, what do you call it? Um, Reading the faces, is that what you say you do? <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. All right. So that's, that's a, like a premonition of maybe an idea of what you can become. You can have two sights. You can see out of your physical eye and your third eye the same reality in the space-time now and yeah. meld the two and show what it is, right? Mm -hmm. That's where it's going, and that's what you're mm -hmm. letting go of to become that. The heat <laughs> is telling you to stop worrying about it. It's okay. telling you it's moving, it's opening, it's DNA popping to reformulate your yeah. neuro, neuro net to allow this vibratory state of awareness to match with what you can comprehend as a vision from third eye as well as visual eye. Mm. Gotcha? Mm. Visualize clairvoyantly or visualize as in seeing interdimensionally, which is not unfamiliar to me. No, 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 no. We're talking about you can walk around in your sight, like you're looking at the camera right now, and see both realities on top of each other. Right, okay, that's what I, what I picture, the merging. Yes, gotcha. yes. That's where it's going. Okay, cool. Good with that? Mm-hmm. How you develop it is allowing. Mm -hmm. You will get the urge of what the practicum will be. And it will be effortless. And you don't have to do it a lot. Because a lot is time. You okay. don't think, oh, I need to do that. Then you're obligated. Fuck, I got to do this. No, you don't. It's like buying a gym membership. Why would you ever do that? Because then you have to go to the gym. Damn. <laughs> okay. I'm there with you on that one. <laughs> All right. What else? Oh, um, okay. The UFO one, the shining one that um, is in this area, I'll just say. Mm -hmm. It's not in this area alone, but it, it's been perceived here a lot. Where Have I you am. seen it? Last, first time yesterday, and I got really excited. Yeah. Because it has been like years. And then years before that. Well, don't worry about before that. So you saw it in this space time now yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> so so what do you think it meant? We'll give you this. Oh, you I were know. able to see it because you were able to attain the frequency of that mm -hmm. to allow you to see it. Yeah, yeah. It's an interdimensional craft. It is not what you call a third density solid craft. Yeah. Interdimensional, yeah, big difference. Oh uh, yeah, it's an orb of light, or it's an interdimensional color too. I know those yes. colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just know that you are allowing yourself to get that vibratory state which is a familiarity with that vibratory state, which the more you're familiar with it in the perfect now of experience, the more you can be in that vibratory state for whatever experience is going to be available next in that state. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sense? 
Yes. Yeah, you're clever. We know that. You got that. <laughs> um, the beings on the ship, or whatever, it's not... It, I understand the mechanics of it all, so it sounds weird when I say, like, what I say, but, um... Those ones, like... I like like what is the message? Like I want I want I know those ones are in the forefront because yesterday. So like I want to know like what? Verbally, can you channel them? Yeah. Um. Oh, I yeah, consciously yeah. channel all day in and out. No, these beings. This specific idea of that being. Can you channel them? Well, like I get it. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean. The beings like, on this ship. Can you channel them? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah I'm supposed to say yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so there's going to be the answer. Yeah, but that's uh, what it is. I just want, I just want like a name, like I'm just like angsty. I want a name. You want a, a name can, of what? Because like you can connect with beings. A name of what? I don't know, like. The beings that are trying to channel through me with this whole third eye and this whole helping okay, me. Okay, you're, you're throwing too much shit on the plate. Stop. Mm -hmm. What? The first intention is what? To channel, you want a name, of these beings. Yeah, yeah. I don't, what yeah. beings? Which ones? The ones on the ship, right? There are, I feel there are beings in the forefront, three in the forefront of Trying to get through to me. Um, okay. And I Why are you making it so hard? Look at your frustration. Oh, they're trying to get through to me. No. 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 It's because I'm feeling their energy. So, like, yes. um, they're with so me. So, allow them. I just, so but I don't, I can't stop. hear them. I can't yes, hear you them. can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Stop. Clear your head. See how you limit yourself? Are you stopped? Are you clear? Say yeah. Yes or no? I'm okay. To name. So tell me the name of the entity that is saying hello to you right now. Trust the words. I'm blocking myself. Yes, that's why they're not coming. If I give it to you, how do you evolve? Well, like I've done the channeling thing. I'm just, I just, I'm lazy right now. I don't want to do it. You're not lazy. <laughs> It's not your perfect moment then. Yeah. Because you can't be, let's say, wanting with resistance because that is an idea of an expectation. That's the idea of accomplishment. That's the idea of, the, the idea of ego. What you want to do is allow in the perfect moment. You're giving yourself anti I need to know the answer. Why? What's it going to do? Is it going to ascend you? Is it going to go, I got it. It's another piece of candy. It's a lollipop. You Soon you'll be done with it. The idea behind this is the lesson that you're teaching yourself. Do I need to know this right now? Can I have patience? Can I be in the idea of the now instead of time? Can I stop blocking myself and allow it to come in a perfect moment? Knowing that's coming because this is my new state of being. And when I have now raised my state of being, they come instantaneously because I'm not in the vibratory state I'm in right now. Blocking. Yeah, because like, I was like, trancing out and like connecting with a name but I knew that like you would be speaking to me again so I couldn't go all the way there yet like I had to like my consciousness had to be like here so I could talk <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah thank you yes I do again you're it. welcome though you're rocking it. <laughs> thank you so much thank you for letting me speak guys thanks Oh, you're more than welcome, Chris. It's always a pleasure to have interactions such as yours, you're experienced, and you've been through a lot, and it's um, really important sometimes that you can show that you, you can do so much channeling and stuff, and you can also lose your way a little bit, and finding that reconnection is, is really important, so thank you very much for the interaction. Gabriel, um, we'll be doing the last question, so Gabriel, are you ready? Hello, Osifius. Uh, it's all. Oh, you changed. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Bingo. I, I connected to my. Uh, yesterday I was in bed and then I just spoke out the name Lucario and I really resonate. I was asking about my guide and I feel he came to me and said his name finally. 
Mm -hmm. I wonder if you have anything more to share about that being. Let me ask you a question. Is that your guide, Nikariu? Yes or no? Yeah, th that's how I felt. So okay. I, I feel it's, Is it it's you're now that. knowing? No. Or yeah. you were looking? Are you looking for validation from me to confirm that when you already know that? No, I, 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 I was looking for more information about it, not okay. validation. So if you I'm have asking. anything. Well, okay, we'll, we'll get to that. You're jumping ahead. I'm trying to get <laughs> you to understand what you're doing to yourself. Yeah. Are you knowing that that is your guide, yes or no? Yes. You're done with that. Yes. So what is the guide saying to you? Why do you need me? That guide is infinite. Uh, yeah. Any I, messages I was... from that guide? Which only tells me you're asking me to give the messages that your guide, that your guide is telling me to tell you when you are just now knowing it's your guide. Why do you need a middleman? Ah, I know why. <laughs> trust. Because you don't you trust try. it yet. This is the reason for the guides, to trust those beautiful words, no matter how out of bounds they are, no matter how silly they are, because that's you defining it to what it's supposed to be of a guide. That's why I felt I had to ask this question. Yes, perfect question, because now we're here. How fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Excellent. you for that. You're welcome. Sylvester, thank yes. you ever so much. It's always a pleasure for you to come and join us. I know there's a little bit of confusion sometimes because you're a new kid on the block, let's say. Oh, it doesn't, yeah. It's, oh, we're not I, worried about the confusion. It's all now opportunity. Perfect, perfect moment. Yeah. So my, my heartfelt gratitude for yourself and for everybody um, who's been watching on YouTube today. Uh, who's been taking part in the webinar. Thank you for allowing space. Thank you, Gurid Dan, for helping moderating. Without you, these things do not happen, so I just want to thank you very much as well. Obviously, you can check out Roxy's stuff at Odyssey Ascension on YouTube. I want to give a bit of a shout-out. And I just want to end with a few announcements, if that's okay with everybody, after I thanked people. Um, there's one more thank you I've got to say from behalf of everybody and for Hukolo and thank you for helping Sarah with her journey. Um, she's been collecting donations and everybody's helped out very much. She's still in receiving mode for donations. She's not there yet. So if there's any more uh, little pennies or spare dollars, pounds, drachmas, whatever you have, pieces of silver, chuck her away and um, make that journey a real special one for her. She really deserves it. She's put in a load of hard work. So once again, thank you to everybody. Um, the only announcements I have today um, will be an exciting one actually because we've got a new channeling webinar coming up that's going to be regular on Thursdays. We're going to be having special guests. We're going to be having honored members of Hugh Colo coming in and doing a special webinar. I think it's going to be on Thursday, early Thursday evenings, um, EDT. Um, we'll let you know more about that, but we've got some really awesome guests lined up, including one of the members who's in the room right here right now. And also, she, Karen Newman, also has a radio show on the 20th of September, and I'm proud to say that Kim will be appearing on the radio show on the 20th of September. So, about oneness with Karen Newman featuring Kim, so we're really excited, well, I'm really excited, and I hope you all are as well. <laughs> also, the meditation for tomorrow has been led by Roxy, that's at 7pm on Sunday, so I hope you can tune in for that one, and yeah, we love you, we love you, thank you Sabrina and everybody there at your house, thank you everybody for tuning in, we've been Human Colony TV, we are becoming, uh, that's a little bit of boasting here the largest online channeling community there is. So if you want to be part of it, www.humancolony.org, sign up, see what we're all about. We've got a new website coming up as well, so the donations we're receiving, so we are growing. We'll be forming this beautiful crystal. So if you want to be part of our train, come pick up the tracks. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> see you next time. Thank you all. Love you. Thank you. Bye-bye.